Right, I'm here for another episode of Thor Inquiry, my interview series on my second YouTube channel. And my guest for this one is going to be Saul, who is one of the best battle rappers from the UK rap scene. In fact, he was actually the champion for many, many events. He had a big streak going in Don't Flop, obviously the, the premier UK organization at one point in time. Right, so Saul, to start off with, like in my style of interviews generally, I'll just give everyone the heads up on this is I don't do like a default template of an interview of like certain things always. I don't necessarily even do like a, things that fans would want. I'm actually just very selfish. Just ask what I'm interested in and whatever I'm curious about. So Beautiful. even though I usually actually find it quite hackneyed to ask about people's past because it's mm. like the most obvious first question. In your case, I did want to ask in as much as one area, and no one's ever asked you along these lines, I've noticed, is, right, so the whole premise and conceit of battle rap and a lot of rap culture in the modern day where people don't necessarily literally come from the projects, and obviously mm. anyone knows this is like a joke conceit within battle rap, is a lot of people don't sell drugs and shoot people in the face with knives, <laughs> etc. right? We all know that. So we all understand that a lot of the people doing the American style are putting it on, right? Mm. Here's my question to you. Right, it's easy, mate. If you don't come from Scotland, or I'm actually from the northeast of England, if you're not from these areas, if someone's from London, if you told them all, yeah, I'm from the rough streets of Fife, you know, everyone's just <laughs> fucking on heroin, and listen, it's I had a bloody blade to my throat as a kid, you know, they're gonna buy yeah. that, mate. They'll think, fucking, oh, oh like some scary northerner, stay away. Same as in yeah. my area, you know, they're gonna think we're all just like heroin addicts, you know, okay. <laughs> begging for a pound or something. How much of that is actually true? Like, what did you actually come from rough background? Um, rough in the sense that it's, um, like the area I'm from is pretty, I don't know, you put it like impoverished. It was, uh, so, well, so the town I'm from is a place called, or grew up for 19 years, a place called Loch Gally. Um, it was the first, I don't, I don't know how many years in a row, but it was like the lowest house prices in Britain. Um, I wouldn't classify it as like one of the most like dangerous places, like, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it was like super dangerous, like in comparison to places like London or anything like that. Um, it's just super like uh, rundown, post Thatcher uh, Britain. It was like one of those small towns that was like entirely built around like a coal mine, like was actually yes. built. It was yes. like built because a coal mine was there. <coughs> sure. Um, so when those were shut down, obviously, um, yeah. So it's it's was really like run down uh when i was growing up and yeah a lot of sort of um drug problems and stuff but um i wouldn't i wouldn't classify it as super dangerous um no more within than that, any other like sort of working class sure. uh, area well within that context then Again, mm. obviously, like I say, it is part of part and parcel of being a rapper. I mean, at the end of the day, part of what you do is projecting a persona that can potentially intimidate an opponent. And also, you have to make yourself sound cool. You know, you can't just be like, yeah, I was from a place that, you know, didn't have much money, but it was all right. You know, like that that's not a great yeah. line to go with talking about. So the question would be this. Within that context... Was Saul actually someone who was a street kid? Was someone who was rough? Or Because when I look at the first battles, you look like a fucking student, mate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but like a uh, rough kid or whatever, like was it certainly wasn't like uh I don't know, gang banging or whatever. Just like one of the lads really just go around and yeah, get into like a couple of fights here and there and stuff, do like stuff that stupid kids do in poor areas, sure. like carry knives and stuff, but never actually I don't know what you're asking, I've never actually stabbed anyone. Um was in a lot of fights growing up, but um, never like anything that I would have had to do like prison time for or anything. Okay. Just like, just like kind of a, like imagine like a typical kid from like one of these um, northern, northern poor towns, I guess. Okay, because because the interesting thing to me is if someone in like an old school hip hop context really did literally come from this projects and they were doing, you know, break dancing or something or DJing and they got influenced mm. in like, as they say, the culture over there, you know, I kind of get actually why that person would end up in battle rap, right? because basically within their subculture, you're not going to be a fucking poet or someone writing a novel. Like if you want to be expressive and artistic to some degree, that's one of your outlets. The others are like sports. Maybe there's not very many things mm. you can do over there. But yeah, in your sure. particular case, since I like, as I, I've made it very clear, like it is a conceit for a lot of people in the modern day of battle rap. And in fact, I remember someone once phrased it in quite a funny way where they basically said, like, we are basically just like 
<laughs> aggressively saying poetry at each other. Like it's not actually as as hench as it seems from the yeah, outside, you not. know. In in light of that, what what made do you want to get into battle rap? What was the appeal of it to you? Because like I say, it is kind of like there's as much as it, it has the cool factor once you make it, it's kind of a bit artsy when you get into it, right? Uh yeah, for sure. I mean definitely when you get to like uh once you get like proper into it, um it is quite artsy. I mean I kind of just found it by accident, man. Like totally by accident. Um, like I don't know, like how many people know, but like I used to, uh, for probably about four years, uh, I played poker from a, a primary source of income. Um, so I was like playing from very young, and then I found out um, about. Bar- Do you know these old like V bulletin forums that these have? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So there was one, a really big one called like Two Plus Two, which was like the biggest sort of uh, poker forum on the internet. Um, So I was obviously a regular poster on there. I was like playing underage. Uh, So I was probably about 16 when I was on there. And they had this like off topic bit. And it was like some stupid like battle the person above you thread or whatever. This is like quite quite early internet so probably like 12 13 years ago um so this thread sounds mad cringe already (laughs) yeah it's so cringe but i mean it's like 13 years ago of course yes um so yeah i just found out about bar apps through there and then people posting like battles in there um and then yeah just found out about sites where people would um they would uh, text battle and they would uh, uh, record verses and put them on SoundCloud. And then, ha- like, you would do one, the other person would do one, and then people would judge it. So it was kind of like uh-huh. bar rap like that. And yeah, I just got kind of into it as like a hobby for two years. And then Don't Flop came up to did an event in Scotland and uh, yeah, I tried out and then I just went from there. Um, but yeah, I just kind of found out about bar rap by accident, man. I mean, I was obviously like super into. Um, like hip hop music and stuff, but the only sort of experience I had with battle rap before that was like Eight Mile. <laughs> so of course, yeah, something really super cliche. Yeah, so, exactly, yeah, of course. exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then in that case, I think you've actually preemptively answered what would have been my next question, which was basically you've often made a theme in your uh, rounds, even as a champion. It's a very clever tactic which is basically you make yourself like, I'm the guy who invested in my life into this before I made it. Like I was paying myself to an event. And mm-hmm. obviously it's a great angle actually to play against the fact that, you know, an, an easy angle against you is like, you come from a shit all no one cares about. And it's like, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I came all the way from there down to London to do an event and I'd pay my own way. And, you know, I'd have to invest a lot. And what have you done basically, right? It's a clever yeah. angle to take. I know you did it against, um, oh, what's the what's the guy who says always put the, the kettle on or something at the end? Oh, uh, Quill. Yeah. There we go. That was I know that was the angle against him because yeah. the idea with him was he turned down some battles and hadn't turned up and hilariously yeah, yeah, yeah. turned up to an event where he'd actually not turned up for the battle. <laughs> but then the, what, one of the most genius angles ever, I have to say, because it was ridiculous. Yeah, but <laughs> but along those lines, then have I kind of answered already? Did was it was it poker that allowed you the disposable income to, to pursue this then? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I had the, enough disposable income to just like do it as a hobby. Um, yeah, I mean, I just had like enough spare cash to pay my way down there for I don't know like when the first battle I got paid for was probably like five years ago or something so yeah for four years I was just kind of like funding it as a hobby just because I enjoyed doing it man I just enjoyed like calling people names I guess um fuck knows why but uh yeah I guess I just always loved hip-hop and stuff so it was just like an outlet obviously like where I'm from there isn't an outlet you know, like there's 7,000 people in the town, so there's no like battle rap events or even sure. like music nights other than like pub singers. So it's like, yeah. If you were as into it at the beginning like this, like obviously this is way before you've ever made it and become a name and all those th- things that people mm. say, like you have to put it in your graft, especially if you come from nowhere and you, you weren't part of like a, a traditional scene anyway, you know, to the, to yeah. the extent that London had a scene, etc. But in, yeah. in that kind of a world, if you're that dedicated and you were kind of a guy like grinding, you know, would you have been someone where if you hadn't of like, leveled up your skills and gotten to a high level would you still be doing it would you be that guy who's still at the bottom of the card and they still turn up every time you know in a, in a mad way on one hand i kind of respect them on the other some of them are so bad you're like bro come on just quit like yeah hell no that's not me that's uh like um i think another thing that kind of drives it is i'm like quite competitive so like 
I played sports in high school and stuff and I've just always been like really competitive. So I was, if I was just like showing up for four years, just getting my ass kicked all the time and not getting any better, then yeah, that's not for me. I'll just pack it in. Um, but yeah, I think like a lot of the people that, like I, I, I feel the same way as you do. I, I really respect like people that have that much of a, <coughs> I don't know, a love for it to just like show up and consistently get their ass beat like for four years. Uh, just because they love it so much and just want to be a part of it. Um, and as much as I do love it, I don't love it enough to just, yeah, if I was terrible, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I noticed, by the way, you have the same problem I do, which is because, because in my job as an esports interviewer, I've done so many interviews that by default aren't with people from the UK, they're with people from other countries, especially obviously Americans. Mm -hmm. I, I now by default call all things by the American name. So even though you are from Scotland and I'm from the Northeast of England, you have just called it high school there. But I knew what you meant. I totally understood what you meant, Saul. But have you done that generally? Like I have to say, even with some of my friends back home, I'll, I do say like soda and stuff like that. And I just think, why am I saying to them though? Like, <laughs> you never call it that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We call wait, we called high school high school. Really? In Scotland yeah. it's called high school. Yeah, it's called high school. You know, there's one reference along those lines <laughs> that almost no American got, even though it was a brilliant line, actually. And actually, I didn't know, because we don't have this in England, mate. It was when you did that line that was about like trying to take away my golden hour. I remember oh, being like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah, that's like some that's some <laughs> Scottish shit. When I found out, it's a straight fire reference, mate. But like, yeah. I had no idea what the fuck that meant. <laughs> uh, golden time was the shit, man. That was like, uh, when you lost your golden time, that was pain. It sounds so dark as well, because for people who don't know, the premise is, if, if you're American, you get like a recess period, right? But mm. depending on how much they think you've misbehaved, they just reduce that almost like the opposite <laughs> of extending a prison sentence if you've been naughty. Yeah, and so that's much. like the concept, right? They're just like, it's the establishment just literally now even fucking with your time off. Yeah, I know, it's fucked up. They were even doing it primary school, man. The primary school. It's like <laughs> starting that's, that's early. Rough. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucked up, but hey. That's where I come from, man. Right. One of the things I noticed that people never do, it's impossible, even in my field, mate, of esports, right? I know for sure every pro player who came up in esports, when they were themselves beginning, had a player that was their favorite player and a player that they admired and a player mm -hmm. that they wanted to be like and, and someone they wanted to play with. But because part of the competition is you don't let the facade drop and you don't show your weak spot, when you become a pro, you have to lie and go... I never had any heroes personally, you know. I just, uh, my, I think I was my own hero, and I kind of just always viewed these guys as another guy. It's like it's a cool thing to say, but here's the thing: I figure when I've seen the way you react in battles, and you seem to kind of give people their due where you can. There must have been some people who kind of you looked up to, or you wanted to pattern something after them, right? a hundred percent. Yeah, loads of people, loads of people, loads of people. I still think are better than me, to be honest. Like, I don't. I'm not one of these battle rappers that just think that. I'm like the best in the world. And that's also just a conceit in his raps, by the way. That's that goes without saying you have to pretend that, right? <sighs> yeah, I mean you kind of have to like for the but not really though. I mean like I I've certainly done things like in battles where um you really only have to pretend that you think you're better than the other guy. Right. Like, obviously if I'm battling someone that like I genuinely think is better than me, like I'm not gonna, you know, say okay. that in the battle. But I mean, there are people that yeah, I definitely think are better than me and are like, yeah, were my heroes when I came into it. So people like flipping in the UK, Kruger. Um, of course. And like abroad, obviously people like Ilmac and uh, like Hollow. I mean, my favorite, favorite, favorite was Reed Dollars when I was growing up. I just fucking loved Reed okay, Dollars. Okay, unusual choice, but right? <laughs> nah, man, Reed Dollars was fucking sick, man. Like back in like really, really early. Yes. Like sort of Philadelphia Street. DVDs. Obviously, now it's like he's it's aged kinda, not so well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I think he's kind of just trying too hard to be like the new style rather than just doing 2005 Reed Dollars. I think he would be better off doing that. But yeah, people like Reed Dollars, fucking like Enes, like Cicero, like all of them, and flipping the Philadelphia sort of street rappers um, were my like idols. And then obviously, yeah, Ilmac, Thesaurus. Um, yeah, uh, hollow, but yeah, loads of people, man, that I just looked up to and thought were just like almost this unreachable benchmark, which is kind of helpful in a way, I think, to have like an unreachable benchmark, sure. Um, because kind of like then the improvement's never over, right? You can only if you set yourself a benchmark that you can't reach and constantly attempt to, you can only, only get better, really. 
I'll give you an analogy. There was a great um, quote from the quite legendary polemicist and journalist Christopher Hitchens, where he actually said that he thought if you were going to be a writer of any type, you should go out of your way to read the most high level shit you can get your hands mm. on. Because the key thing should be, no matter how good you get individually, you obviously can level up way beyond where you started. There needs to always be someone where you could go and read them. And at the end, think, why do I even fucking bother? Like, you know, I'll never get to that level because it, it stops you getting complacent, right? 100%. I still think that. I still like watch battles from people that like I think better and are just like, wow, I could never do that. <laughs> but then it's like it keeps you on your toes. You know, it's, I think like there are people out there who genuinely do. There's obviously like a set amount of people that like say they're the best and don't believe it. But I think sure. there's a lot of people, especially when you get to kind of like the top 5% that genuinely believe they are the best when they're like nowhere near the best because the top five percent of battle rappers is quite a large number five percent of battle rappers is there's loads of battle rappers so if they like all but if a decent percentage of them might believe that they are genuinely the best but then kind of yeah legitimately believe it it kind of can stagnate them a lot of the time because well, they do I mean, take the a joke, lot of this, yeah. I mean, it, it, like i'd phrase it like this the joke is the reason why smack battles are not judged anymore is to allow both people to think they won <laughs> and then to just brag and still come back to the next battle like if if some of those people actually had to take the l that they absolutely took in real life mm. <laughs> they wouldn't have the same persona they wouldn't have the same following maybe it's sadly it's part of the industry in a way right yeah, potentially. I mean, but even in grind time, like the grind time era, there was a lot of people that did take like a lot of losses and then they just come back and say they got bumped or whatever. So I'm not even sure, sure that's that the much. The judges of a were deterrent. fucking them or whatever. Yeah, of course. Exactly. I'm not even yeah. sure like the whole judgment thing's like that much of a deterrent to people. I mean, obviously, it's for personal pride. You don't want yes. to have like an L next to your name. But I mean, in terms of like how it would affect their mentality, I think if you're deluded enough to be, you know, like someone that's obviously not the best and thinks you are i'm not sure how much taken you're probably deluded enough to you know be like oh the judge has got it wrong for <laughs> sure, I guess. In a row, yeah. you know what i mean so yes absolutely okay because along those lines of what i was setting up there one thing i want to ask about is when i first got into battle rap and obviously mm. one of the problems is there's so much cultural baggage and it and it is by the way this is the reason why it'll never yeah. be mainstream is mm. it is so incessantly self-referential yeah. that even myself I, w- I was such a pleb at the beginning half the people I thought was shit are the people where you go back now and you're like holy fuck his round stands up 10 years later where's the other guy who I yeah, thought was yeah. saying the slick shit it was just all surface material so mm-hmm. one of the things I found very confusing early on is I got really pissed off when someone would say what is objectively a really great line that like everyone can appreciate and then mm. his opponent would do like the mean mug and be like corny or like play it down <laughs> or some shit right because I always used to think like come on man it's not even your round like at least like don't say anything or just don't do that but what yeah. I obviously learned over time was this is actually gamesmanship it's called defense yeah. you know yeah, the idea yeah. is if you do that in the right way and you're the cool guy well then everyone's going to maybe be a little bit swayed to not react as much or maybe someone will even the hater will even go on your side and yeah his, his line was overrated so one of the things as a result though now knowing this context because I've noticed most people take that approach actually is you are someone where i would put you in a in a category with like uh i know thesaurus does this a lot is even when they do you do a little bit of defense like you address what they said mm. oftentimes if they do a, a really sick line you just give them props straight yeah. up but the problem is in in a sense that does help them though right mm. i mean like i guess i'm kind of past the point of like kind of caring too much about like the defense i mean there's two um sort of different ways you can defend right you can defend in a sense where you're like um oh i think they're gonna say xyz so what is the best counter for me to prepare against that so that is defense that i actually care a lot about and i do think a lot about like what my opponent is going to write while i'm writing and how that will impact what i write but in terms of defense in the battle um while it probably does result in like having more wins or like consensus wins, whatever a win is now, it's kind of like, I feel like it kind of hurts the overall like product of it. Because it's like you say, like when you're watching it from a fan's perspective and you see someone like, ah, oh, that was trash, when it was decent, at least, you know. You, it's, unless you're someone that does have that knowledge base to be like, oh, this is gamesmanship, it just makes it like uncomfortable to watch. Sure. You know, or just like, so I'm more about just having like, 
battles that are fun for people to watch now rather than winning or losing. I don't really think I have that much to prove. I mean, I'm not saying I don't have anything to prove like I'm the best, but I think I've certainly like proved that I'm decent at least. And if you like what I do, then you'll watch it. If you don't, then you won't. Like, obviously, I'm a bit more niche than a lot of other battlers, so I'm not really trying to prove anything to anyone. I'm just trying to have like fun battles that are easy to watch. Uh, but I do agree that it would be obviously a better tactic to win more battles if I was more defensive. But I think Thesaurus is in the same boat. We just don't really care enough. He's also that. battled everyone at this point. You know, yeah, like, yeah. he's not he's not trying to win every battle anymore, is he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Right, one thing I want to ask about then is when you go back, what's interesting about battle rap is the fact that obviously with all the different leagues and stuff, you can actually go and see, especially anyone from the modern day, you can basically go and see them at approving grounds or whatever those initial mm. ones are called, where there'll be a scrub, they're starting out. And I'm always interested yeah. that a lot of people actually, yes, they'll be unpolished. Yes, you know, they haven't got the, the skill set yet, or maybe they don't have the showmanship, but actually a lot of rappers still have the core of their style. Like you can see it. Like if you go back mm. in really real deal, battle or something you'll see he still has the same style you know he had a lot of the like initial concepts he just hadn't built them up what's yeah. weird is i only found out about you when once you got bigger in the scene obviously because mm. like i'll go ahead and tell people i watch battle rap like i watch mma i don't watch the fucking undercard i wait till the people i want to see fight come on and then the idea is yeah logically as people move up through the system i get acquainted with them when they get on the main card and mm. then i follow them if they're interesting so i usually have to go back afterwards after the fact and see what people's history was like and what's mm. weird about yours is there's a period when your battles get really good your end of them but if mm. you go back before that you might have some of the, some of the like most ropey first battles of any person yeah, who got awful. really good at the end. Like awful. your style isn't even there at all. Like you, you don't. You, in fact, at the time, I had a harder time even defining what your style was back then. So, what were you like when you began in the kind of dope flop type circuit? Well, the thing is, like all my experience before then had come from just doing it online, right? So, like, the, and when you're recording a verse like online, or you're just like writing bars, it's like. I'm trying to think like how to phrase. So yeah, the, obviously the rule set was different, right? It was less like oh, okay, sixty seconds on you, and that it's just kind of like you had a set amount of bars. So you're just kind of trying to pack as many punchlines into that as possible. But there's no real like um, theme running through it or any. It's just kind of like aimless random wordplay and just trying to be as clever as you can. Basically, that was kind of like I don't know, like kind of like the meta for like online battling or how you got okay. like the most wins was just like being the most clever and then obviously quickly learned or probably not quickly enough but eventually learned uh that that was not the best approach and uh that yeah it was obviously about more like having a balanced style um using like contrast right so like if you just have like a million bars that are like really high level wordplay it's just dull to listen to, right? It's just like by the time you get like halfway through, you're just like, uh, it's just more of this. Um, but you can actually make the wordplay, wordplay that's not as good sound better just by contrasting it with a more direct approach. Uh, so after doing it like online in a certain meta for two years, it just took me a while to learn how to like do it properly. Uh, but for what it's worth, I agree. I don't watch any of my... I haven't watched any of my earlier battles, like probably since they came out, man, because it's just like, it's awful. It's dreadful. So, yeah, I agree with you for what's worth. Sure, fair enough. Well, one thing as well that I thought's interesting is obviously, if people describe your style, like the highlights are all basically trying to be the craziest reference to some nerd shit that hopefully enough people get that it's cool but not everyone mm -hmm. can get it otherwise by default there's no scarcity it can't be that cool you know it's like the, the sort of thing where the other rappers are supposed to like nod like mm, yeah shit yeah I get that <laughs> I, I, know, I get that reference you know like that's half of like the conceit of the battle rap for people who don't follow so the interesting thing to me is Obviously, that's the angle people often take where you're like, oh, you're on that nerd shit, or who cares about anime, mate? But I've always mm. thought that's one of the other hilarious conceits about battle rap, is that if anyone only knows 8 Mile, they're going to think, right, well, it's all about you have to literally be a street thug, and you're bragging about how hard you are, right? And it's like, no, no, no. In the modern day, even literally the smack rappers, who in real life do get into gunfights, are literally throwing, like, their fit, like, the, I'll give you an example of the most generic, like, bar you could do in, in rap that would, that would absolutely 
absolutely hit with most crowds is you in some way reference any SNES game ever. Now, yeah. the idea that that's like hard <laughs> shit, it is in the way that it's a cool line and you can phrase it like, you know, that you're going to do some violence with it. But essentially, we're again, just like it's all people saying poetry at each other, we're all nerds. <laughs> if we know about the SNES and some 80s TV show, like again, if you could reference the Will Smith, like the fucking Fresh Prince, there's another great generic one. If you could reference, I don't know, fucking Power Rangers. Like I've seen some crazy ones where like the most gully rapper ever will just throw down some like Megazord line or something. And I'm yeah. just thinking like, this is such a bubble we're all living in here, guys. So what's weird is that's always the angle people take against you, but... Mm. In, a, in a mad way, you kind of backdoored into what actually was just a more extreme style of what everyone does, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I guess. For me, it's just kind of like, I just rap about like what I know. So like in my bars, like I'm not someone that's going to come with like gum bars or whatever because it's just like, I don't know fucking shit about it. Like, yeah, I might like reference like a, the fact that the place I come from is not like a great place, but that's like about as deep as I'll go with it. Um, I just rap about like what I know, man, and stuff I like, and some of it's like, I guess, like considered cool, and some of it's considered not cool. But I mean, I'm almost fucking thirty, man. Like I've fucking done shit. <laughs> sure. fucking of considered course. cool. Of know course. What I mean, it's like I like it, and if you don't, hey, man, there's a couple other videos on YouTube you can watch. Of course, so take your pick. Well, along those lines, that's something actually when you were saying earlier about how in, initially because of the environment you came up in in rap, it was just mm -hmm. about let's stack as many clever lines as we can yeah, on exactly. top of each other and then let's see who wins, right? Well, if actually that's a pretty good way to describe your first really good battles, but the ones where you hadn't yet come to the top because basically you had the rep that on the one hand, someone like, I love it, but on the other hand, I get why it doesn't make you the best, which is you can't be the guy where it's like, all my bars just go over all your heads. These are for YouTube. It's like, you're gonna, yeah. even though there's more people on YouTube, you're going to look like you lost the battle if you don't, unfortunately, if the whole yeah. crowd doesn't get it. And obviously, like you said, sometimes it's not even that the line isn't fire. It's that you can't, it's like you can't just go up with a notepad and just read out line after line, you know, as cannabis famously tried to but you know like you have to actually not bad reference you actually yeah, have to bad. obviously have some showmanship right you have to be able to deliver it which is why this is a problem i actually had in my life in general in my field i was the super nerd who just knew all the stats and details and stuff mm. but i didn't actually understand like delivery any of the technical skills of showmanship or social skills basically and even mm. worse i used to loop back in my own sort of bullshit excuse which was like Oh, they're just like trying to con people into thinking they're good, you know. I'm I'm the real substance, you know. I've got the real shit. And you know, only the people who get what I'm doing will know it's good. And what I learned years later is actually some of the people who maybe didn't have the most substance had an amazing skill set in terms of showmanship that I just mm. didn't appreciate because I didn't have yeah. it. And even yeah. more so, as I hope everyone's following along, this is pretty obvious where I'm gonna go here. Actually, my own career massively took off when I learned to pair what I was doing anyway, which hopefully had some substance with mm. some style and some flair yeah. and learn how to learn how to deliver it, you know, not always actually try and bash people over the head with the clever line. Like time it, make it mean more, etc. So this clearly must be something that took place in your career. Cause when I think of some of the early battles, like I'll give you a good example of one I remember that was like a big one where I didn't feel like he went over, even though some of the material was great, was the one against Sketch Menace in KOTD. Mm. Like you had some amazing lines in it. But the problem is when you go international like that and the crowd doesn't know you, and then all they hear you is just this nerdy guy spitting a bunch of lines, but mm. without like full conviction and showmanship and stuff, it's mm. easy for them to kind of like feel like you're a fraud or something like that. What, what do you think of this? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think I would just kind of, like, uh, agree, like, with what you said about, like, you have to have a, a blend, right? And it's, like, um, it's definitely been, like, a process that I had to go through as well, but very similar to yourself, where you're kind of just, like, I don't understand why people think that these people are good. Like, I could write what they did in, like, 15 minutes. You know, like, it's that's not difficult to do. But I'll give you an example. You know what like, I mean? It's like, it's the same thing. Like I'll give you a quick example to, to, like, make the point of what I'm trying to make here. Okay, mm -hmm. even though now, he's actually someone I would say is a great example of someone who did update his style and become amazing. In the middle period of his career, I used to think Thesaurus was super whack because all he did was the multis, right? And so I used to think, like, 
but there's not really that many like clever lines behind this. Like, like because mm. I didn't understand like rhyming triplets and stuff like that, I didn't know what he was doing that was good. And so I used to always used to think like, are people just gassing him because he used to be really good years ago? Like, because obviously at the time he didn't do as much punchline rapping. He obviously didn't do schemes as much. You know, a lot of the stuff he did was like what made him the champion originally. But I actually had to learn over time. If you know what his, what the skill set that he's using is, even then he was dope. I just didn't, I couldn't, I had no palate to appreciate it. Yeah, there's kind of like a, a difference, I guess, between like, um, like you can be complex in different ways, right? Like you can have like a complex cadence, like someone like a, a dialect or even like an Enes, right? Like look at Enes might be like a better example. More people will know who that is. Or even like Bill Collector. These are people that are not necessarily saying like the most um, complex lines from a wordplay standpoint, but like the way that they like use their syllables and like the beats that they hit it's like that that it's really complicated right and like that doesn't happen by accident they had to write the words in an order that would create that cadence so like that's complex and like when thesaurus is making like seven syllables match perfectly and both of the seven syllable entities are like perfectly related like that's complex just as complex if not more than having some like crazy double entendre you know like i think anyway i think like you can gauge complexity differently um depending on what someone's sort of style is sure. um yeah so even like someone like bender even is a good example right like of what you're talking about yes. um someone who's like you wouldn't say that he's like not a complex writer but like rarely if ever used well yeah rarely used wordplay his complexity was in like his ability to make very long absurdly good bolties right yeah now. exactly like if you you multi like robert oppenheimer with atomic bomb designer like that it's like literally robert oppenheimer is atomic bomb like that's complex you can't tell me that that's not complex sure um so yeah i guess it's just different um complex is kind of a weird word and i think people kind of like it's kind of like a misnomer in the way that people use it because they tend to only use it as it applies to double entendres but i mean shit you can get a double entendre down at fucking the card factory. Do you know what I mean? So, Sure. Well, I mean, along those lines, like I'll give you a great example because this is one of the things I found interesting as you get, as your palate improves more and more and your knowledge of the actual like technical aspects of what people are doing change how you think. Mm. I love when you go back in time and you watch an old battle that you think you know. You think you know who won this. You think you know how it went. But when you, when you have like later information, it's a new battle. A great example would be, I was always a fan in the early days of people like Real Deal, Fresco. I generally like punchline rappers. Mm. That was like my initial thing I could get into. Not least because, by the way, if I come from the northeast of England, I don't know fucking any of this slang from, <laughs> like, I don't know what the drugs you're selling are. Like, is that a good thing? Like, you know, I'm a, I was one of those kids that was like that. You know, I didn't get into it. I, but I could appreciate, like, a line that hits and, you know, references something. So one of the battles that I, I totally misread when I watched it the first time was the first time Real Deal went on smack when he battled B-Magic. And I remember thinking, mate, that he got, I, that he absolutely murked B-Magic. That B-Magic was trash. But when I went back now, holy fuck, B-Magic is amazing. Mm. That guy is unbelievably good. And even yeah. back then, mate, his shit's the stuff that's gotten better with age. So yeah. along those lines, you say now like you kind of don't care. As it, through your career, have you? Is that something you've had to think about? Is like stuff like, for example, if I've got some great lines here, you don't want to throw them in the bin. But at the same time, maybe they're not of the moment right now. But maybe one day they'll be worth. So is, it, is, is there any like legacy aspect like that where you want like replay value? Is that something you're into? Yeah, that's an interesting question, man. And I think yeah, you're right. There, there. Are- there is an element of that goes into it like there's but again it just comes down to balance man like you have to have a set amount of bars that will connect like with the crowd now because like how engaged the crowd is directly impacts how watchable the battle is anyway so if no one watches the battle then no one's going to watch it five years from now you know so it's like you need to it's like about a yeah, it's just a balance, and actually, you have to have things that are going to hit like right now and get like the crowd engaged, which will be like obviously very of the moment stuff. But you can like sprinkle stuff in there, like throughout it, which is going to be like more legacy things, like where people like watch it back and you know for a fact that it does stand the test of time just due to its class. But if you just do all of that stuff, like literally the whole battle is, oh, this will stand the test of time. Right, think of like the B Magic Real Deal battle as a good example then. 
imagine if real deal had come with the exact same style that like be magic had come with right and it's like incredible in a sense that yeah it stands the test of time but like if real deal hadn't had that performance you wouldn't even be watching it five years from now do you know yes. what I mean? It would have just ah, been a see, the other person had to do it as well. Yeah, you yeah, can't like, well, do that, right? Exactly. The real, well, real deals <coughs> was very like of the moment, like yes. very high impact, and got the crowd very engaged. Yes. Uh, B magic stuff, maybe not so much, but the fact that real deal got the crowd so engaged is the reason that you're coming back to watch the battles in five years. Okay. So while B magic, like yeah. yeah, while B magic stuff is like incredible and taking nothing away from it, B magic is like if a game B magic is like almost unbeatable right it is incredible sure but yeah you wouldn't be yeah that's i guess that's my point you wouldn't be watching it if it hadn't been for for real deal did so i think yeah he could have definitely been a bit more balanced um yeah i think if be magic had had more like of the moment stuff and then used like you know the because obviously it always you can write stuff that stands the test of time sure. but if you had just like sprinkled that a bit more rather than it have like just that element it probably would have been a bit better for him on that day but i definitely agree with you though there is a, a, a definite difference but you just need to be careful to balance it with stuff that will connect right away along those lines then one of the things that i've always found interesting about your style is the, if for people who haven't watched very much battle rap and they're just getting into it, right? The actual most effective style in the room is the line that's actually, it's just clever enough that people think it's sick enough people. It's not too complicated that people can't yeah. hear it. Remember, sometimes even just being able yeah. how far you're away is going to depend on what you think. And you have to pace it. It's like, this is the sad thing because this style goes terribly if, if you don't get the crowd. You basically mm. leave room for applause almost. That's like the joke, you know, you, you're yeah. waiting for like, right, react. And you yeah. can see when that doesn't work. But the problem is, so my joke would be, everyone knows the famous stupid like parody video or battle rap online where the guy's like super hot fire and you know mm. after he just says the line everyone's like oh even though he said a garbage yeah. line you know well the problem is someone who does that will absolutely win the crowd and look amazing mm. even if you don't fuck with the line as much online but you also will think wasn't that great a line you know they're, they're gassing that a little bit but mm-hmm. at the same time you can go the other way and there's times in your style where one of the problems I've noticed you run into is because everyone now does fuck with your style and is hyped to mm. see you, and especially when you're the champion, when you have those bars where you're doing like a full 16 bar setup and it's like you're going super deep into it and they've got to listen and you're up like bar seven, but you've already dropped a few good lines. They go crazy and then famously, no one can hear what the fuck you're saying. You have to stop, rewind it, or if you keep going, it's lost. Like, And the problem with that is on the one hand, you want that because if they stay just loud enough but not too loud, that you can get it out. It looks more epic even then because it's kind of like people are going, going off, etc. It's tough to balance, though. Right? It seems like something you must have struggled with at times in your career. Yeah, I mean, definitely now there's definitely times where you wish people reacted less, but ultimately, like, you have to take ownership of that, right? Like, at a point, like, I'm at a point now where I'm I'm pretty confident that I could write, like, a battle where it was, like, just four bar punchlines that everyone would get a reaction. Um, but if Charlie I'm going to do, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? But, yeah, like, that's why he's the best. It's not all that difficult to do. But if I'm writing, like, a 16-bar scheme and then the crowd pops on bar 14, that's my fault because I made bar 14 too good, right? That's my fault. Um, like I'll give you an example. Like, so the, you know the bit in the Raptor battle where I do like uh, the shoemaker and then switch to shoemaker, right? So like the bar where I said where the punchline was actually shoemaker. Yeah, they, I, made that I don't bar. think people heard that actually. From what yeah. I remember. So yeah, it was like I made but I made that bar deliberately not good so that people wouldn't react so that Raptor would have enough time to correct me and say shoemaker. Right, right and the, you set him up for it. Yeah, but like, I'm, if I had like a crazy punchline where the bar is Schumacher, the punchline is Schumacher, and the crowd's going crazy, and Raptor corrects me, then like no one's going to hear him correct me, and it doesn't work. So like, you have to. If I'm writing like a sixteen bar scheme, it's like irresponsible of me to make like bar fourteen a fire bar because it's just going to kill my momentum. So like, if they pop on bar fourteen of a sixteen bar or bar six or seven of an eight bar, like yeah. That's my fault. I shouldn't have made that bar as good. I should have had that bar at like bar four or bar 12 or something, you know? Like, okay. uh, so yeah, I think as much as it is annoying when crowds pop, 
uh, at the wrong point, it's you that's made them pop at that point, and it's something that you can improve on rather than the crowd. You know, it's not their fault. They're just reacting to what they like. So, Like I alluded to earlier, when you had, especially obviously like when you get to the top level in the UK and then obviously there's like, uh, just like in my game, there's another level when you go international and it's a different mm. crowd and environment and you kind of have to earn your dues again. Just as a reference, like the Sketch Menace Battle is a good example. Here's one where it's kind of like you came in and by default, they were going to cheer for that guy. They wanted him to win. They, basically, mm. they wanted a punch him back that he would just win against. So when you start dropping good lines, it's almost like you have to win them over line by line. You know, they're begrudgingly giving you a little bit of respect or yeah. fucking with the line. But you could see visibly in these battles, you aren't as confident as you are now. You don't hold the same frame and kind of like take it when they go through the tough times. And so I would give the contrast would have to be this Gemini battle. Because I have to say, I've seen a lot of battle rap in my time, but I've almost never seen someone who got completely, basically, shit crowd reaction for the first round. And basically, as if you know how battles work, if two good battlers battle, you can't just lose an entire round massively. That, that'd be like in boxing if you just lose like 10-7 or something. Like It's yeah. going to be hard to win this fight after that because you're going to have to dominate the rounds or win mm-hmm. every round. So in this scenario, you even say in the battle, basically, like, I don't give up. Like I just kept going and I kind of like, I brute forced it through. So what was the evolution? in this sense and in that battle were you actually aware of the fact that basically I mean you were basically like playing one versus a hundred or something right <laughs> yeah no I mean that battle was just fucking rough man but um I mean I kind of you kind of have to give Gemini his credit right because he went first and he created a very hostile environment towards me with his material so I mean his angles were just like really good and maybe my angles were yeah, suboptimal for like the first round uh, with a new crowd. Maybe underestimated how just how unknown I would be to them because I was like, I was still in the UK. They probably, you know, 40, 30 percent of them know me. But yeah, probably wasn't that. <laughs> probably wasn't close to that. So um, yeah, I kind of have to give Gemini's credit for that. But in terms of the evolution, man, I think it's just like getting older uh, more than anything, more than anything like battle rap related. Um, just as you get older, I think like less phases you. Because uh, I definitely was like quite young when I came into battle rap, and have like grown up through it. So, um, yeah, I just like um, and also I mean, maybe like a little bit like your upbringing as well. Like Northerners are like kind of tougher mentally, I think, than Southerners are. I don't There's know. No argument for me with that. Yeah, I mean, I, but yeah, I just, I, I just really think that we are, and yeah, obviously, like I might be like a bit more nervous, like in my earlier battles, but I'm pretty confident that I've always had like that feeling where, like, if I feel like everyone's against me, it just like gets my back up and make me try even harder, I guess. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think it definitely became becomes easier with age. Uh, less just phases you as you grow up. You realize that like even if these guys boo me constantly through the next you know three rounds, you know I still have a job. You know I still have a house. You know it's like it's not it's not the fucking end of the world. Whereas when you're younger, it's maybe like a little bit of a seems like a much bigger deal. Um, so maybe. Caring less is maybe the wrong word, but like feeling that the stakes are lower um, helps out a little bit as well. One of the things I've always found interesting, because actually, you know, there's so much like braggadocious element to battle rap and the angles are like, like it's still an angle now that everyone just like fucking five X is the money they're making and claims they're <laughs> making that many stacks, etc. It's like, listen, mate, I know basic economics. There's no way you're making that much. Like, it doesn't even make yeah, sense, does exactly. it? There's no, there's not even pay-per-view nah. on some of this shit. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Not but anyway, close. you know, you, you it, when you see all that, like it'd be one thing if that was all pure fantasy. But I've always found this, is that when people do angles like that, if you say that shit, enough you almost start to believe half of it and so one of the things i've always found sucks about battle rap and it reminds me of my own field of esports when it was much smaller and the money Mm. people made was way way less and especially in the uk this was the mentality is one of the things that held people back from being greater players or playing for longer and accomplishing more things is they always wanted to have this angle of like 
I want to be known as like, I'm good just from talent and I do it sometimes, but since this isn't like a high value, high status thing that you make a lot of money from, I'm never going to admit that I'm like fully into this and that, right. you, know, everything, okay. you know, and it's like, they're always waiting for the angle of like, I'll just do it a bit, you know, and I might quit anyway soon because you're all losers, you know. In Battle Rock, <laughs> there's a lot of that. The amount of people who've retired after like two or three years at the top, I'm like, the fuck are you doing? Whereas mm. like, I, I, you know, I love some of the people I've referenced before, the thesauruses, Ilmax, they'll do it until they get sick of it. Like that, they might do it for yeah. 20 more years. So, it feels as though if you look at your activity level, are you are you potentially a battle raff lifer? Is it it's gonna do more for you? You don't seem to have lots of motivation. I mean, I'm I'm definitely doing less battles than I used to, right? Like the year I won the title, I did ten battles that year. So that's Which is ridiculous like, for anyone that doesn't know. Yeah, it's like stupid really. Um and now like I generally do two or three. Um but that's more just like a function of uh, just being busier in my life like kind of uh, when i was playing poker i just kind of like set my own schedule um now like i'm obviously employed uh engaged like getting a f- like chaos and shit so it's like just <laughs> okay. like you don't really have time you know to like do all these battles anymore i just literally do not have the free time um but yeah i mean like I'd probably keep doing battles like at that rate, probably like no less than like one a year until I'm just like completely sick of it. Um, and definitely money is not the motivating factor. Like I'm happy like with what I get paid to to battle, um, but I'm not like you know I'm not making like flipping five grand a battle. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like, or, but it's enough to keep me like motivated and to be honest even if i didn't ever get paid again i would probably still end up battling you know i'd probably still do it because i do still like enjoy it i like the community i like like obviously the friends i've made through it and yeah it's just cool man it's just a cool community to be a part of so um i think people that are like very oh you guys are all losers i can't wait to get away and it's just like it's kind of lame man it's just like, listen, whether you like it or not, you're one of us. Of yeah, course, of exactly. Us. So it's like, you're all in the pit with all can, of us. <laughs> you can admit that to yourself or you can go like full crabs in a bucket. Sure. And, but it's like, <laughs> ultimately, you're hanging out with us. So it's kind of like, uh, yeah, you know, like Brexit, man. <laughs> like fucking trying to be like, oh, you lame, but help us out because one of our ships has been captured and also we still want to trade, but you guys are lame though. Um, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like you want to, you want to kind of be in the club, but we're one foot up the door. The club's lame. Sure. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Odd. Okay, one thing I wanted to know, I kind of set it up earlier when I was talking about the fact that you've obviously become very famous, like some of your most famous lines, probably still the most famous line is like my pen games death note, you know, it's mm. the one actually that I did on Twitter when I did that tweet, but um, one of the things I found interesting is as well, like I said, just as actually, by the way, with all the street shit, half of what makes a line really hard is some people have to totally get the line and then they're usually the other rappers nodding like, oh, that's fucking amazing. Mm. But then half the people who react in the crowd just know, they know just enough to know it must be a sick line, but they don't really fully get the reference. And that's why, by the way, if you know psychology, they're the guy who has to go, woo! Because obviously like they're trying to tell everyone like, I know this shit, what don't you? Now, here's the funny thing people won't think about. It's easy to understand that a lot of people are doing that with the street shit. But dude, Mm. I'm going to go ahead and say this. Some of your most successful lines must also have done the same thing. Like, listen, I, I know that that Death Note line popped, and I think it's a sick line, but I'm mm. going to go ahead right now and call bullshit that most of the crowd, like, I don't think, like, fucking Math Hoffer or something has ever watched Death Note. I do not believe that. Yeah. Maybe he vaguely has heard of the, the <laughs> joy, you know, like, there's no way these people have. So, in a weird way, you've also got your own sort of, like, fake hype on some of the lines, right? It's kind of a, oh, a factor of the yeah. scene, right? Yeah, for sure. I think, like, uh, that sort of uh, snowball effect or whatever um obviously there might be like one or two people that like get the line and also like there's kind of a weird phenomenon in battle rap now where there's almost like influencers in the crowd where it's like there is people that um if they react like they're kind of no because we are like a much smaller scene than the u.s um there is people that are kind of known to have like good taste or like yeah so like if they react to the line it can sort of trigger off like a sort of chain reaction like you're saying people just kind of like 
but yeah, no, a hundred percent. I'm sure like all the people that like reacted to flipping my playing game is death note. I doubt all of them have watched flipping death note. You know, but it's like uh, <laughs> sure. I wasn't really expecting any reaction for it. That was kind of the ones I put in there, like we were talking about earlier, the ones that would kind of like stand the test of time, but wasn't right. really wasn't really expecting any reaction from it. Um, but it must yeah. be weird. That's kind of your thing now, then, because now people are waiting for know, those lines, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's really weird, man. It's it's weird. I don't know. I think I've had a f- quite a lot of people tweet me and be like, oh, I watched Death Note. <laughs> like, that that wasn't really the intention, but yeah. yeah. It's like, I thought it would be the, it was meant to be the other way around. Like I was referencing something that people yes. have watched, not, not reference <laughs> something that, that people don't know what it is and go watch it. But hey, take it how I can get it, I guess. Okay. One thing I remember, like, listen, I know obviously this is very subjective, so I'm not trying to claim to be some authority, mm. but for me, the battle where it all came together, and I've looked at the timeline on this, the, the, the moment that changes everything, this is your like Caesar crossing the Rubicon moment, I think it is the low Pesci battle. Because mm. before that, you have some some battles where there's some materials going well, you know, there's some like some that you're vibing, some that, like I said, in the early days are a bit ropey, and obviously you were against worse opposition, people that never made it, you know, and so the quality of the battle generally isn't as good. But the Low Pesci battle is like a mixture of like, you're again, I watched it for Low Pesci because obviously that's the name I knew in light mm. of how I said I watched battles. And so when I watch it and I see he's against some Scottish guy I don't really know, I'm thinking, right, well, this is just going to be, I'll enjoy his rounds and we'll see how the other guys goes. I might be skipping this shit, you know. Mm. By the way, shout out to YouTube, love that feature. But yeah. anyway, one of the things that I thought was interesting was it's like you had the international opponent, so obviously that's going to give you the status. And then I don't know what from your side it was like, but from the viewing side, this feels like an almost flawless performance. Like you got all your material out. It all seemed to like work thematically. And the crowd obviously popped off big time. What, what do you mm. think? Yeah, no, I think like definitely um, I had been on a run before that battle, which was the reason I even got it. Like I battled most prob, um, and that went like really, really well. Um, and then I think I had another one that went really well. And then that just like kind of started off like this massive fucking winning streak that ended up with C major. I think Lopeshi was fairly early on in it though. Yes. Um, and yeah, definitely. Cause obviously the most prob was kind of like the start of the streak or whatever. Um, but definitely in terms of like recognition and how many people actually watched the battle, um, the Lopeshi one did kind of like kickstart it for me. Um, and yeah, obviously was like super proud of that performance and happy with how it went, especially because Lopeshi is one of my favorites. So It's also pretty it's cool. Nice, it must've so. been pretty surreal that again, speaking of people who don't like use defense, he was reacting to all your bars. And obviously people know, again, he's somebody who famously his whole style is like, I'm from the fucking, the, the people that know your style shit. Like he basically play, leans into that heavily, mainly mm. because on other aspects, he wouldn't be that popular. Either. So he, he cleverly knows like what his brand is, you know, he was popping off himself when you were going off. Yeah, no, I think like, yeah, I think to be honest, like um, he's just someone that, um, he's like an elitist, but not in a bad way. He's just like, he does not suffer fools. In, in the battle rap sense sure. you know what I mean like if someone is completely trash like he makes sure that you know you're completely trash while you're rapping like he just it thinks like if you are trash you just should not be doing this full stop um, but I think he is like quite fair <coughs> with his reaction and it's same with Osa even when I was battling Osa Osa was really kind of yes. like generous with his reaction towards me so it was Bender uh, I notice it's the writers Bender, who tend like, to be a bit fairer if the line's good, right? Because the mm-hmm. writer will just kind of himself appreciate, like, that is a good line. i got to give props. Yeah, exactly. I think, like, we kind of, uh, amongst the, the writers, we all kind of, like, know, know what's up. Along those lines, though, um, one of the aspects, actually, in this particular battle, the Low Pesci one that I wanted to ask about is, obviously, in your style, I mean... You actually can, if you really wanted to, just reference every anime and video game stuff you want and make really great lines that'll pop off. But if you wanted, mm-hmm. you could literally do it where they never had to address the opponent. Like you could potentially even win the battle doing this without directly doing personals and stuff. So I've always wondered actually, is when you do something, so for example, you had the line where you were like, how he'd had a mask of spawn placed upon him because of daylight with the spawn mm. tattoo and daylight had obviously done the thing where he'd rubbed his nuts and put his hand on him. Now mm. in that kind of scenario, you obviously are someone who appreciates Lopez's style mm. and let's face it, right? That is one of those things where it's actually kind of tragic because basically with the kind of pleb person who watches battles, Lopez will basically never overcome that to some degree. Mm. So if you reference it, it's good for a line and you should do Like, listen, you're all supposed to go as hard as you can against each other, but 
doesn't it kind of kill you a little bit? Because it, it, you also do kind of feel like I'm having a kind of use a cheap tactic on this guy as well, but it'll work. It will work. Kind of. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if it's like a, a cheap tactic. My uh, my remit in the battle is just to do like whatever is most effective. Um, and that for me was like the most effective. Like you could argue, right? Like, and a lot of people have um, that a uh, Gemini's ta- tactic on me in the first round was cheap. Um, well, especially because some of the things he referenced obviously were like he he kind of like mm-hmm. fudged it a little bit on some of the things he claimed you stole, right? Like some of those lines he definitely sure. didn't steal, but well, he sold it against, like a motherfucker. That was that was against shucks, though. Oh, I, my I mean, mistake. Like, my, yeah, my first the first one he did against me was um uh like kind of all the race stuff. Oh right, yeah. Well, that's an uh, obvious classic one. That it seems like a cheap tactic, right? Okay, right, yeah. But it was really effective though. So it's yes. like that. Yeah. I mean, realistically, like, I don't. I don't really see it as I don't really see it as cheap as such. I mean definitely like when I was um younger and maybe a bit more like snobby for want of a better word in terms of what I liked, I would definitely be like, Oh that sucks, that's that's cheap, that's easy. But it works and ultimately what we're doing is like putting on a show for people that have come and paid money to see it. Um and if you're entertaining them by doing that, then I can't really fault you for it. Um, and round about like that time, like when I was going on that little streak, like the most prob, the, the Lopeshti battle, um, the old English battle, all that was in kind of like the same time period. And I was just kind of like realizing, yeah, my only real obligation is to entertain the people that have like showed up and I need to start being a lot less, uh, concerned with the manner in which I do that. One thing I actually always wondered about was, after you'd already been the champion, won many, many battles, basically established yourself on paper as the absolute best person in the UK, you had this battle not so long ago with Arsenal, who obviously is a legendary... In fact, he's the person I should have referenced earlier, because Hmm. Arsenal can even say something that if I hear it, and even if I write it down, I'm like, there's nothing in there. But when he (laughs) says it, even I'm like, that sounds fire. That sounds fucking amazing. You know, He's he's incredible at delivery, Hmm. obviously. And the problem with that, I've noticed, is... He, uh, he also obviously has ridiculous crowd control. And when you mm. did this battle, in the circumstances of where this battle was and who you are, and in fact, the fact that Arsenal had already bloody retired a couple of times before, mm. you would think you by default would be like the crowd favorite. But this felt like a battle where the crowd bizarrely didn't fuck with you on it. Like it seemed, it seemed like you didn't really get over. Mm. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like the uh, in terms of like how the crowd reacted to it, um, a lot of people kind of like struggled for crowd reaction that day um it was kind of like a weird crowd it was like a mix between a king of the dot crowd and a smack url crowd um but just like smaller it was kind of like a smaller version of the, the summer madness crowd um probably a little bit more weighted towards king of the dot fans than smack fans than that one but it yeah i don't know i mean i think like it was just kind of like a, a weird battle because a lot of his stuff he had like quite a lot of dry spots too. And I kind of attribute that to the crowd being like quite split. Like that, that's a battle where it's like when you're going into it, like no one who thinks that I'm going to win the battle before the battle starts is going to think that Arsenal won after it. There's no law because that, basically, it, right? It, we're so, we're about as polarized as you could possibly be in terms of style. So it's almost just like an exhibition thing. Like people who think Arsenal is going to win before the battle, unless Arsenal literally chokes all three rounds, they're not going to think that I won. And even if they do think that I won, they're not going to think I was good because our styles are just so like polar opposite. Um, So I think like the crowd being a little bit off is kind of like a function of that. You'll have people there that probably know Arsenal and not me. Um, and everyone that knows me will obviously know Arsenal, but uh, people that are maybe like more my fans are probably not going to fuck with him as much, and people that are his fans might not fuck with me as much because we are like so opposites. So probably like when the crowd is reacting, it's probably people that like me are reacting to my stuff, and nice. people that like him are reacting to his. So the bat, I agree, the battle is like quite off and like awkward to watch, and I think it's that's kind of the best explanation I can think of it as because. I don't think that my material is bad in it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. 
that's the only explanation I can come up with. Cause I definitely don't think I was bad in it at all. I think my material stands up, but it was just kind of a little bit awkward at times. <laughs> In light of the uh, what you referenced in the Gemini battle, where I got it mixed up the first round, yeah, it was he took the race angle on that one, and the angle, mm. which is obviously that's like the easiest angle to take against anyone white if you are not white, which is like this guy's racist. Look at him, like, and, 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 and by the way, in front of a crowd of hip hop fans, like, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a pretty easy sell if you get that over. You know, it's going to be pretty fucking effective in light of what it's mm-hmm. going to inspire in their mind. In light of that, right, I'll give you an example. Back in the day in esports, when we first started to get not just tournaments, but we had proper like broadcasts, and then we had the analysts, and we had like couches and people who would be able to be entertainers one of the problems was when people would do kind of the style i'm into which is like you do a bit of banter you know a bit of wordplay and stuff the problem is to make that work you kind of have to be the person in the community who's allowed to do that like the the guy who's the straight laced guy in the suit and tie if he tried to throw some shit like that at me even if it was a great line it wouldn't work like the crowd doesn't buy it they don't like sort of give him the free pass to say the crazy shit and so famously there was an example of two guys who were good entertainers and one of them was bantering the other one and the problem is because the second guy his whole brand was like I actually don't give a fuck about this shit like I'll just quit tomorrow if they fire me and I'm just going to say what I want to say I I made this point to people watching, like, you know, he's always going to win, right? Because when the other guy makes the joke, like, hey, man, you know, what about something with your mom? Then he can be like, well, your mom's a pedophile. It's like, well, just, you can't, if you can't go <laughs> to that level, you know, yeah, it's, it's unfair. You can't go to that level and match him. You know, he can always yeah. sort of step outside the circle. Well, similarly, along the racial line, like, even if you had an amazing rebuttal, it's going to be pretty hard to get away with making any kind of a crack at someone who's non-whites race in a battle. So isn't that kind of off limits? You don't think so? Um, uh, so what was the question is the question that white people can't necessarily yeah. make jokes about other races with the I would, same I would expect that's the perception at least maybe now certainly like in battle rap in 20 well 2008 9 10 there was some crazy like <laughs> race sure. shit like white people Oh, I can't lie. Listen, madness. I'm sure someone like Censor would say whatever the fuck he wanted. Bro, bro but you even know. like, even guys like fucking, who was it that, I think it was the Soros said to dumbfounded, like, some good There's a lot of Asian in Vietnam shit, shit, yes. yeah, and like, <laughs> go make me a cell phone with tape and some Velcro or something like that. Like, Jesus. yeah, it's just like wild shit, man. Like, but certainly now, uh, there's probably less scope for it, certainly in the larger battles, but I think that's. That's kind of fine, man. But I think that's less a function of like, yeah, you don't ever want to. It sounds like fucked up, but obviously, like, this is kind of like a heavy conversation, but it's probably easier to be white than it is to be any other race, right? Like, in terms of how easy it is to go through life, in terms of like people, sure. I don't know, how people interact with you. Yeah, uh, seems how. Yeah, how just how in general how difficult it is, right? So like if a white person's being racist to like uh, a non white person in a battle, it's similar to like comedians, they punch up, right? You don't like right, yes. you know what I mean like it's almost <coughs> like it's like that's fucked up. But like if a fucking you know what I mean, someone who's not white is just like to a white guy or whatever fucking you dance weird. It's like it's not fucking as that's true it, yes. it's not as like do, deep do you know what i mean it's like all right so yeah it's, it's more fine and i'm kind of fine with it being that way like i get that a lot of people have the opinion like oh if it's all right for you know black people to make jokes about white people then it's all right for white people to make jokes about black people but i don't necessarily see it that way man i think like um even just from like a performer's point of view it's uh it's a tricky one. It's a tricky subject, man. Yeah, the problem with that one, I would say, is this. It's like, listen, if we're all sat in a sixth form college somewhere having a theoretical discussion, yeah, in theory, everyone should treat each other identically and all the rules should be the same. The problem is the practical realities are very different. And in this particular case, if the audience themselves include a lot of people who are black, I mean, you can go and try that line if you want, but it, it, just for the, the sake of your own performance, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, and the thing is, like, no one's stopping you doing it. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you have free speech. You can do, like, whatever the fuck you want, but you just wouldn't do it because it doesn't work. And it, rightly so. It shouldn't work. <laughs> sure, yes. You know, like, so, like, why... It's not that unreasonable, is it, a demand? Yeah, like, just don't do this one thing. I mean, 
but even if you like, but it's not even don't do this one thing. Do the thing if you want, but it's not going to work. And you'll get the consequences. Yeah, yes. certainly don't get upset when it doesn't work. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, so yeah, I mean, like, and ther- just to bring it back to like the gem thing, like, I'm pretty fine with the angle he took. Um, obviously, like, I, I don't think I'm a racist, but I certainly don't, like <laughs> feel racist. Uh, sure. um, it's not one of those things you want to ever have to say, really. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't think there's really a great deal of evidence that you I think like his case was tenuous at best. But I mean, it certainly got the crowd. And like I was saying earlier, like your only remit is to entertain the crowd that have paid to show up on the day. Um, and you're free to do that however you choose. And as you should, you should do whatever entertains the most people because they're the ones that paid their money. So I'm certainly not upset. I've upset I'm about it and even from a strategy perspective trying to win the battle obviously it was very effective and worked so check out with them right unfortunately today like my brain's not on a little bit who, what's the name of that guy who was quite well known in Dort Flop who was actually from Newcastle what was the name of that rapper Definition there we go Definition that's what I'm referring to right I'm going to use him as an example because as you said before in theory you've got free speech and you can say whatever you want but mm. as people might know if they ever watched his battles he was someone himself by the way who actually definitely thought if he was against a woman or someone else he'd say whatever the fuck he wanted and by the way some of the lines were pure banner he did a good job selling them actually yeah. and in fact oftentimes he could sell a line like that and I'd think fuck it he's going to get in trouble but because it hit with the crowd they actually didn't mind they kind of fucked with it but yeah. the where it did come back to bite him was famously he asked Don't Flop to private and unlist a whole bunch of his videos and take them down Mm. because he'd gotten a new job and he was really worried that they'd find out who you know google his name find out his battles and then they'd review his material and yeah like whatever normal job you're going to get in the world now they're not really going to appreciate material like that unfortunately and they're not sadly in some cases going to take it as an art form or like a special area where you're allowed to say is this something you ever worry about because obviously you've had some pretty harsh lines that might be like you know uh, like like a really good line, but it might yeah. reference like some tragedy or something horrible that happened in the person's country. Do you ever have any concerns yourself? Like that might impact future employers or someone just might Google you who knows you in real life and it might impact it? Not not particularly. I think it depends on the type of work you do, right? So like definition, I'm pretty sure at that time was like teaching high school. And I think he actually yes. did lose his job. Over, I think he did lose his job over it and then got them unlisted. Um so, yeah, obviously that would suck if I was doing a job where I was, like, working with, you know, kids or whatever. Yeah, obviously you don't want to flip and have stuff on YouTube. you like, threatening to flip and batter people and stuff. Uh, but, I mean, the type of work I do, like, I, I don't really have to worry about it too much. It's kind of like, yeah, I <coughs> guess, like, less... I don't know. I guess, like, you're you're not really... And if you're obviously if you're working as like a teacher or you're working as like a flipping nurse or like a carer or whatever or like anything where you're working with like vulnerable people or people are with like entrusting you with like a important part of their life and potentially vulnerable people like kids or the elderly then yeah obviously you can't have that stuff in their background um Especially if there's like more, like I'm not really someone who very often does like race stuff. Definition, obviously, I'd like one or two in there. And if you're working at a school where it obviously be multicultural, sure, you know, it's it's not great. But I don't really have to worry about that because I'm not a teacher and I'm not a carer and have no plans to be. Um, so yeah, I. I it's not something I really worry about. If I was ever going to get like a, if someone came up to me tomorrow and say, we've got this job, we're going to pay you like a hundred thousand a year, but you have to like unlist all your battles. <laughs> Sayonara battles. But like, <laughs> okay, at least you keep it real. Like, yeah. A hundred percent. Like, well, it's worth obviously like, cause people will rip them anyway. Do you know what I mean? They're all still, sure. I'm sure people will like rip them and have them out there. It's not like they'll completely disappear, but, um, yeah, it's not something I worry about. I mean, if it becomes something that I need to worry about, then yeah, obviously I'll take the appropriate steps. But I don't really think that I'm someone that has to worry too much anyway because I'm not, I don't, not someone that like dances on the line too much. You know, a lot of it is very like personal to the opponent I'm battling or it's just referencing some 
like complete flipping off the wall like anime or video game or whatever so it's not like it's kind of like fresco right like fresco would never have to worry about any of his battles because it's not there's nothing in there that's like risky do you know sure. what i mean it's like a it's scheme like, about xbox or something it's like, just yeah, of course. yeah yeah and yeah i'm maybe not like just as i'm not as like pure bars as fresco but i'm definitely like closer to that than i am to like someone like definition or o'shea who are like very close to the line a lot of the time since you referenced his name, I've got to ask this question because mm. I actually, you are the second battle rapper I've interviewed on this channel. I actually interviewed Fresco and along similar lines because for people who don't know, what happened was I made a tweet where I just referenced one of Saul's lines and Saul actually replied on Twitter. And yeah. funnily enough, this just shows how bizarre the modern world is and how <laughs> surreal everything's got because we are all just dead in a fucking afterlife wormhole or something. <laughs> like I've, I've just figured that out years ago, mate. We all went through the locking glass. Everything's <laughs> black, black as white, up is down. Like Even though, to me, because I I've watched Battle Rap for a long time. I wouldn't have expected you to see that in reply. You replied mm. like, wow, do you know who I am? Which is like, oh yeah, wait a minute. Actually, if someone vaguely was in in like Counter-Strike or something, I guess it would seem weird to them that I would know. Like, but I never yeah. actually would have even thought of that way. So I had a similar thing happen with Fresco actually, where what happened was in one of my videos that was literally just about esports, I, I referenced to make a witty point, like a line that he'd made, which was mm-hmm. an esports related line. And he himself commented in the YouTube comments and was like, yo, I've been fucking with you since back in the day and see this one. But I was like, what the fuck? So obviously I reached out, did an interview with him. And here's the sad thing though, mate is in this interview, I always think to myself, because like I said, my bias is to people who are writers, basically like, yeah, I love Bo mm. Pesci and Bender and you and Fresco, Real Deal, like all these people are my absolute favorites. So in my mind, I not only want to see all these matchups, but I always imagine, like you kind of did earlier, give them credit, like that you'd all acknowledge each other. But bizarrely, when I brought your name up, because this is a battle I'd love to see, Sol versus Fresco, he actually called you an F word that's considered a slur, so... He, he, he said he, he didn't like you. Yes, he didn't like you. I, I was amazed. He like I don't know what it was. He, he implied you were like corny or something. I thought he'd at least appreciate the writing angle, you know, or whatever. And I so mean, he said, of, like, yeah. if he doesn't like me as a, if he doesn't like me as a battler, that's like fair enough. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm definitely would like not like the guy based on him not liking me as a battler. I'm sure there's like tons of people that don't like me as a battler. Like I say, my style is like fairly like niche and I don't expect like a lot of people to 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 enjoy it but I don't think we had any personal problem I've never had a personal problem with Fresco Sad thing is, like I say, man, I, I think I still think that would be an amazing battle. Maybe it'd be even better now if you actually if you have some fake beef he's gonna create but I, I think that I, would be an amazing battle. I think he's good. I think he's a really good battler. And I, I've don't I've met him like once years and years and years ago. Um, at one of the Blood in the Water events, but I've never met him since, not to my recollection. And yeah, I wasn't aware we had any issues. But okay, right, well, I'll throw my hat in the day. ring. You know, I'm going to become a promoter <laughs> now. I'm starting the beef. I'm delivering all the messages here. Right, okay, personal receipts, hand delivered. Yeah. Hey, I wish him all the best, man. I'm sorry to hear he's not a fan, but I mean, yeah, I hope we can at least coexist peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> within that premise do you think similarly to kind of how i was describing like you want to battle all the writers as well and then see because obviously part of the cool thing is you want to hear what lines they come with for you right mm. yeah i think like fresco is someone that um like i don't necessarily think his performance for me would be that much different than his performance for you know like a thesaurus or whatever he is someone that and this isn't like a bad thing at all this isn't me like doing an don't like an underhanded compliment yes. it's just like his style is legitimately like a lot of his things are quite like just general him just coming up with the best bars he can anytime which, like, someone does incredible. schemes and they're american i know it's generally like it could apply to anyone like you could yeah. take a what i'm losing all, what, what's the name of the guy from boston who's like famously does all the schemes uh chiller jones yes like, the, like obviously that's why that everyone takes that angle against him he could just mm. take his lines and apply them to a lot of people you yeah, know. but I don't. But he does them amazingly. A, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. You could no. say the same thing about B Magic. You know, like I think like That's Fresco's true. like style is his style it is what it is. But he does it like really, really well. He's a really like talented writer. But certainly, I wouldn't like be battling or expecting to hear an awful lot about my myself. But that's not. That's neither really here nor there. It's not like that. That's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I think like I would get as much out of it as watching like Fresco battle. Whoever, 
but I think like he is really good and I always like watch his battles and stuff. So yeah, obviously I would love to test myself against them maybe at some time in the future. You never know. Well, one thing I never want to do is like unduly put my preference in and load it into the question and make it like you have to agree or you're obliged to. So I don't, I don't know, like I asked you earlier, but I can't always know who to someone is a legend or who's corny or whatever, but was it a big deal to do a battle with Ilmac? Uh, yeah, no, it was a, um, yeah, yeah, it was a, it was kind of like a, a nice thing to take off. Uh, he's always been someone that like, you know, grew up watching, obviously. And uh, yeah, it was really cool to yeah get to get to battle him and test myself against them. I think like it was a pretty close battle, and yeah, I was obviously proud of the fact that you know it was, it was as close as it was, and with how highly like I rate him and stuff. So. Yeah, this it was actually, really cool. Oh, sorry. This actually ties into something we referred to earlier where you were saying, like, about, I forget who it was, but about someone who, oh, Reed Dollars, where you said that as he tried to, like, update to the modern style, it, if anything, it wasn't as good. Like, you would have preferred yeah. it if he stuck with the style you liked from before. Yeah, for sure. That's obviously something which is really tricky because on the one hand, you've got a brand and people expect something from you. But on the other hand, you know, you want to grow as an artist. You want to, uh, sometimes yeah. you think your style's getting outdated. And I can say on both sides of that, I've seen people make mistakes. Like for me, or, like I've said with this historic example, I thought for a while, actually, he kind of himself didn't realize that his style just wasn't the style that everyone was doing. But years later, he got incredible at a newer style, actually, and updated his formula completely, got right back to the top again. So mm. Ilmax, another example. These are people who've been around so long, they've had to go through those cycles of self-reflection and figure out, mm. you know, to, like, I, I know, I imagine one of the things that must be tough for people like them is you must have, because of your reputation, the entourage. So I bet there's people telling you it's all great shit and, you know, the crowd just wasn't fucking with you and that might even delay your progress. So even though you've been in quite a while, have you had to go through this yourself? Like, have you had to change your style or, or, or sometimes take things that, yeah, they would work if I did 10 of these things, but let's take three of them out and throw in some experimental shit. Do you have to do that? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like you have to, yeah, there's, it goes through cycles, man. Like it, a lot of time, like my problem was like, I would find something that would work and then I would like just do that and be like, like basically I was like, Oh, people actually react to like longer rhyme schemes more than they do just me doing like two bar and four bar punchlines back to back. So like, I'm going to stop doing like all of that and I'll just do longer rhyme schemes. And then it was like, right, that doesn't work. And then I was like, all right, okay, I'll stop doing that. And then I'll try something else. And then eventually I got to a point where I realized it's like, the answer isn't doing just like one of these things. Like one of these things isn't just a bit, it's like having like a balance. And then once I realized that it was just kind of like, refining it um and getting better at like each element of it um and i think that's like <coughs> the, the similar cycle that, that like a lot of people have gone through like ilmac especially um used to just be like very much the on the the sort of rhyme schemes and then went like quite punchliney for a while and then eventually we all kind of coalesce into like a the realization that like yeah like we all coalesce into like just the the middle um where all our styles we're all doing like a bit of everything um and i think that's true of like the top battlers i mean with a few like notable exceptions like the top battlers in each specific region they don't really have a style that you can pin down it's just kind of they do like a bit of everything and i really believe that like balance is like the most important thing and battle rap like balancing your style and doing a little bit of jokes and breaking it up because they all it all works to make because contrast is what like makes things seem good right like sure. having something that's a really long scheme and then right after it you do a two bar punchline like that two bar punchline hits much harder because of the you did a long like eight or 16 bar scheme i'll give you an example so man contrasted. and this is from a fairly recent battle so you'll remember it exactly there's a moment in your battle against orsa where mm. you know you're doing some good stuff but because it's all jokey 
because he mm. was coming at you with like street style stuff it wasn't at, your stuff wasn't always getting over when you were doing the jokey stuff about yeah. like him being a lawyer etc and so there's yeah. the moment where you actually say like you want to hear some like I don't know street shit or something and you switch it up and you very quickly go super aggressive with kind of like what you're saying like something where if it was if you were a fighting game character that'd be like your combo you know you go into the mm. sort of shit that people want to hear from yeah. Saul like that's you, you got to have that in your back pocket right yeah, but like that, what I did after that wouldn't have seemed as good if it hadn't been contrasted with the fact that I was doing jokey stuff before it. If I had just come right into the round and just started doing that and just did that for the whole round and then round two and round three, it would just, it would suck. Or it definitely wouldn't have, res- it might not suck like objectively, like each piece of it, you can sort of deconstruct and be sure. like, yep, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. But like holistically as a whole performance it's not good because it's just one note all the way through um so yeah even though the jokey stuff itself definitely could have been better against those or definitely like better executed or better performed um it served its purpose and that it made what came after it um seem better than it otherwise would have in my Along opinion the- anyway oh. Yeah, along those lines, actually, something, and I'll use Ilmac as an example. I don't, he didn't invent this, but he's very famous for this. One of the things when you get like a good knowledge of battle rap as to why Ilmac seems amazing to most rappers, I've noticed, is he has two skills that like are so hard to execute as far as I can tell as an amateur layman. One is, first of all, he will do rhyming sections where if you are an absolute scrub, you won't even know he's rhyming because he's not rhyming the word at the end of the word. And in mm. fact, sometimes he's like alternating the rhyme. Now, if you understand battle rap, sometimes this is amazing shit and you're like, how does he even fucking like think up a line like that? And then somehow, like, because when you get the, the beat going in your head, you can sort of follow it, you know, and you go, that's amazing. And then the other part is, obviously, the most famous example of this was when he did that one against uh, Big K, where he did that whole thing of like, and the battle didn't even happen yet, where he set up that massive story. Now, I've noticed you've done a lot of these. Like, I remember when you did against Shocks, you had that round about, you know, he's gone to hell and you've dragged him through and stuff. The problem with that is, right, if that doesn't land, if you don't build up and that doesn't hit at the end, you have Mm. just basically spent half the round telling everyone a bunch of really cool background details to a fanfic story of what might happen and if at the end you don't nail it it's a big gamble you know there's not a lot of hits as much in that point you, you're kind of setting up imagery and telling a story that's i know it's not a lot of people go for that because it feels like the, the level of execution has to be pretty high yeah i guess but i think it depends on like how much like what you're trying to get out of the battle right like if i'm like just solely obsessed on like winning the battle and nothing else and it's just like the most important thing in my life to win this battle then yeah i probably wouldn't do it but i mean at the same time it's kind of interesting as an experiment to see what works and what doesn't like will this work won't this work um if it doesn't work can i go back and figure out why it didn't work and kind of like reverse engineer it and find a way to make it work or is it just completely trash so it's like it's fun to like try different things and see if they work and because if it does then just something else you can add to your game and use to balance you know other parts of it um so yeah obviously like it it didn't really work that well against shocks for me in my opinion i don't think like i executed it very well um and yeah it was a learning experience, but I think like it's a big gamble in the context of the battle. But like the battle itself is a fairly like low stakes situation. You know what I mean? It's like the worst that can happen is it doesn't work and yes. you lose a battle, and it's not like the end of the world. So it's more interesting for me just to like find out what works and what doesn't. Um, and if I lose a battle because of it, then it's not. You know, I'll still get to sleep all right. <laughs> One thing, and this is actually another good example of where over the years, like I said, I came to appreciate more and more just the raw technical skill that someone like Thesaurus has and like how they actually like match things and how they breath control, etc. Because one of the things I've noticed actually is when you've done your schemes where like you say it's like a 16 bar setup and like uh, not setup rather like 16 bars where it's all punchline 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 it's going straight into each other and especially if you're like building sort of a scheme within it as well where it all has one theme and you're trying to keep it all going is i noticed because obviously bender himself is very famous for this style what was um right. when he would do it both of you had the same problems i'm wondering if it's actually just a problem of this format is when you do that ideally and i bet when you write it 
it looks all great and structured, but it seems like it's very hard to have good breath control when you do that. It's easy to like run out of breath halfway through part or have to take the big pause that kind of like sh- shakes the floor a bit. What do you say on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you kind of have to write your breath control. Again, it all kind of comes back to writing. Like I was saying with the like people that that you wouldn't necessarily think that like an Enes or a, a bill collector, you wouldn't like class them as like a whatever, a quote unquote great writer. But they are great writers. They're literally writing their cadences. Do you know what I mean? Like that that didn't happen like by accident. That the words came out and that was their cadence. Um, so it's similar to like when you are writing one of these like schemes, you can't just like write it like an essay. And I've definitely like, been guilty of doing that in the past and not actually giving enough thought of I'm actually gonna have to perform this. And I might like lose lose my breath something i've definitely got better at i think like if you look at like the the raptor battle from a few years back um that was quite a good one to see like where at that time where i was in terms of like when i was doing long schemes i had written them like i don't know how to put it i guess like more responsibly like knowing where i would have to stop from bre- stop for breath and leave myself room in the middle of the bars to stop for breath like natural pauses um Whereas he had kind of written his more like a, without that in mind. Um, and obviously then struggled for like breath through like portions of it. Um, so it's just something that you learn over time and, and get better at. And like I still like make mistakes with it. Um, but yeah, it's just something, it's something definitely to consider. But it's in the right, it's in like the right in process. It's not, I don't think it is like a function of the, um, the stuff. It doesn't have stuff. to be like that, right. No, it doesn't. It's um, it's something that you can, you can fix like while you're at the writing stage, just by being more responsible and actually thinking while you're writing it. Okay, I'm gonna have to perform this, so I need to leave spaces, you know, here, because I'm gonna be ra- I've I've been rapping for X amount without a breath before it, so there needs to be a space here, and yeah, just making it all as natural as possible. Um, sure. One, one area I can relate to your rise is that when I started in the esports world, and it was obviously much, much smaller, and like I said earlier, like I was mainly dealing with people who weren't from the UK. In fact, mostly people whose native language might not even be English. They might be from Sweden or mm. Germany or Spain or something. And one of the things I immediately realized is, put it this way, mate, I didn't talk like this. Like I didn't used to have this accent. <laughs> I used to talk like someone who came from Middlesbrough, which yeah. as people know, if you even go about, like I don't know, 50 miles south of Middlesbrough, someone would be like, as well, the irony is, mate, they always ask me if I'm from fucking Scotland. And I'd be like, not quite. You know, like, uh, I would always tell them, I, yeah, exactly. I used to just go, yeah, it's an hour away, mate, close enough. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take that one, you know, whatever. <laughs> We're all, may as well bring the wall down. But Might as well. I, I always used to say to them, right, oh, you know, do, can you just not understand what I'm saying? And they'd say, like, I can sort of understand the words, but it's the accent that throws me. And what I noticed over time is two phenomena happen. One, as people just know you more, their ear definitely tunes into you. But then the other part, that's why I said I don't talk the way I did then, you kind of almost, its you don't even have to think about it. You just naturally, your voice also becomes a little bit more neutral and you kind of mm-hmm. know somehow your brain like polishes off the rough edges. And even though like I still obviously still have an accent, it's a lot more understandable for a lot of people now, right? In your particular case, First of all, I'm going to guess if we went back in time 15 years ago and someone in Fife came up and talked to you, I probably wouldn't fucking know what the two of you are talking about. Like, I, I can't have even a Glasgow accent, mate. I, just, I, I, I have to tune out immediately. <laughs> you may as well be speaking another language. But yeah. in battle rap, you've gotten to a pretty big level for someone who has a very non-standard English mm. accent. So yeah. obviously the crowd in these buildings generally must know what you're saying. Like, they must fuck you in some sense. What do you think of this angle? Yeah, no, I definitely think you're right on both points. I think, like... Um when I perform my accent probably is a little bit more neutral and certainly like it it's almost just more like in the word choice I use like if I'm like just talking to my like mates or whatever or like I see one of my mates on the street I'd be like how's it going neighbor or like you know what I mean it's like you would just say stuff that it's just like it's almost like yeah your vernacular would would change because it wouldn't like people wouldn't understand what I was saying like if I just spoke like how I spoke to my friends or people that are from like the same area as me, um, even like this interview, do you know what I mean? Like I'm not going to sure. like be going like crazy sly or talk like as close to the Queens as I possibly can, you know? Sure. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, I think it's a bit of both. Like I think like uh, when I first came along, like you say, my accent <coughs> is like quite quite non-standard. Um, so it probably does take like a while to for people to get used to. But the more they watch your battles, the more they understand it because ultimately it is English you're speaking. So regardless of how like crazy the accent is, like if someone is saying like English words, like eventually you'll understand like with enough practice. Um, but I definitely like met them halfway with the vernacular that I use. One of the things that actually we were talking about while I was setting the interview up, just making small talk, was the fact that it's very interesting, the phenomenon, because I found this in my own career, where when I was coming up, and as I say, you know, people didn't always understand me. Like the, the, the way I knew I'd finally gotten the accent right was people just stopped saying like, come again, uh, excuse, pardon. Mm. They would actually know what I meant, you know, roughly enough to not just not say it. And then I kind of sensed like, right, I'm going somewhere now. But at the time... You know what, mate? When it's your own fucking native language, you do feel a bit self-conscious. Like, what the fuck? Like, mm. you know, I, I, this is my language. I'm like, what? I can I not speak my own language? And I used to think to myself naively, luckily I didn't have the money to do this, mate. Maybe I should get some sort of like elocution lessons or something. Maybe I should like update my style a little bit. Whereas obviously, I think you could probably see where I'm going with this. And what I eventually realized is if you can break through, if you can get the inertia to get mm. over to the crowd with the wrestling terminology, as it were, all of those things that initially people would have said would hold you back, like coming from the Northeast, literally saying the word cunt 700 times to Americans mm. that don't appreciate that word, by the way, yeah. you know, having ginger hair. These are all things that like, if you're a kid, these are, these are no's like that's an X next to your name. Mm. Eventually it actually becomes a strength. It becomes like a defining factor. Whereas if I'd turned up in a suit and tie with the Queens received English, mm. I, I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. I mean, you, you, you seem like someone who's really heavily, you've just embraced him. Yeah. I think like if, yeah, uh, obviously it's similar to like the Eminem thing, right? Like where for him being being white was a disadvantage until it was an advantage, right? Like he eventually, like once he broke through, like it was like, oh, he's the fucking white guy that can rap. And like a lot of people, like young impressionable kids like me were like, oh, look, you know, a, he's the white rapper. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure. and that's what he became. Like obviously, you know, whatever, I was like fucking 14. But, we all thought that, mate. I think yeah, we all exactly. That, you know what I mean? uh, but uh, yeah, I guess it's similar, right? Like where at, at the start, it's like uh, he's just some <coughs> fucking like Scottish guy, and it's really difficult to break through because you're having to travel like fucking twelve hours down to fucking Bristol to rap in an accent that no one there understands, and you're not getting any fucking love because no one actually understands what you're saying. Or like fucking fourteen hours in the train to Brighton to rap for people that don't understand what you're saying, but eventually, like you're saying, it becomes like this defining trait where you are like I'm not saying I'm the only Scottish battler. Obviously, like there is other Scottish battlers, and arguably, like Respect BA might even be like a more prolific Scottish battler than me. So I'm not saying I'm like the only Scottish battler, but certainly right now, like the most active one. It becomes like that thing. You're know, like probably if I was from England. I might not have like, or from America, I might not have, or probably wouldn't have the same degree of notoriety because I wouldn't have had that like defining feature. I would have just been another guy. Sure. Right. When you had your title match against C Major, which obviously was under unusual circumstances because it was actually two contenders fighting each <laughs> other because Tony D had made the belt vacant. And so it, it actually had as a result a strange dynamic because normally you're used to the title dynamic of like mm. this guy's the champion, which nearly always means at least half a verse is going to be about I'm the champion, you're not, and this is why I should remain the champion. And then the challenge is going to have half a verse that's like... You're, you've been a shit champion and you've betrayed us yeah. all and here's why I... It's like it's some political shit, right? But obviously what I liked about this battle in premise was it was just like both people have to go hard and then whoever wins, wins. But what's interesting yeah. is I've noticed this undercurrent in this interview where you, you're you very self-deprecating, you, you downplay yourself a little bit. I'll, I won't lie. I fucked with you more than C Major and I always appreciated yeah. his style within the context of where it comes from. But I would have, if you'd have asked me, gone to my head before this battle, who would win? In t if they both do a good performance, who wins in terms of the crowd? I'd say he 100% wins. Like, think of where the mm. battle was. Like, it, literally, his style, people, by default, like I said earlier, they want to fuck with the street style more than they do, like, 
And here's why I'd cross you over in a checkboard and boggle your mind. Like, they don't want to hear that. Like, that's cool. But you know what I mean? Like, there's a certain like there's a certain part of the crowd. Like, if the entourage to fucking T-Rex was watching the battle, they wouldn't react to that line, you know, like, no matter how good it is. So yeah. I would have thought you'd be heavily, like, the odds would be stacked against you. So what did you think of this battle and the fact that you won? Um. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of surprised that i got like as much reaction as i did i kind of thought the same way as you that people would sort of be more inclined to his style just in the fact that it was from london um but yeah people just seem to be like super receptive to my material for whatever reason and yeah it was it was a weird like kind of dynamic because there was no like, like champion but i just decided to approach it like i already was the champion and i was like i'll just i'll just write it like i am the champion <laughs> and just like you know just make that dynamic try and fucking trick everyone uh, which is ironic right. because obviously every battle after that you definitely played into this style yourself you always had the round mm. where it would explain why i'm the true champion and why you will ever be and, and obviously by the way it's just a classic angle to take which is like yeah. the fact you're even a challenger you know it's like i've given you already enough respect that kind of angle right mm -hmm. but you did it very very well though you always had a different take on it each time i noticed yeah but even like against like c major or whatever a lot of the stuff where i'm saying about like like the whole like uh i've been in this like just fucking grinding for like four years paying my own way and that and you just came along like yes. like after it is kind of like without like explicitly mentioning it it is kind of an angle that if you tack like and that's why i'm the champion onto the end of that like it's it would be like you were reading your resume would, off you know basically. i mean yeah that, exactly, exactly. Yes. if you if you were to fucking like tack that's why i'm the champion onto the end of that it's basically like a fucking round that you would write if you were the champion and why someone is an unworthy contender or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just decided to approach that like I was already the champion and just write it like that because I did was aware that it could be like a weird dynamic um, with just like the vacant title. Um, but I think it was actually a really good battle and I think kind of his material has aged really well uh, when sure. you watch that battle. Um, and I think it that's probably helped by the fact that there isn't a lot of reaction so it's kind of just like wrapped how he wrote it so it's quite yes. like pleasant to listen to without like that much interruption and he didn't actually get as much pop as i thought he would some of his lines that are good just go deaf yeah but i think that makes the lines better when you watch them back like not necessarily yeah i don't know because like he's wrapped he's the way he writes he's like a exceptional rapper like c major so he sure. just writes his stuff without thinking about like oh the crowd will react here so i need a pause here he just writes it like he's writing a fucking whatever 48 bar diss track so like if there's no reaction in that that sounds like a lot more pleasant to listen to same way that like an ens round with like no reaction is more pleasant to listen to than an Enes round that's getting stopped for reaction every four bars because the guy sure. writes it like a song. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. written it like a song. You don't want to like have a fucking crowd clapping every six bars in a song and then you have to hear the last four bars again. It's like so yeah, I think C Major's runs have aged really well. Um in it. But I think like, yeah, at the time, for whatever reason, he just didn't really get much from the crowd. One skill I've noticed he has, because one of the things about his style is, is very smooth. Like his, his way of pronouncing words. It's mm. like, it, it's very much of a style, but he's very consistent with it. And I've noticed this is one of the, this is another good example where I used to be a complete pleb. I used to always think that American rappers were cheating because you know, American generally in, in compared to like British English, it's already like a little bit more like lyrical. It feels, and it's a little bit more like, like the words sound a lot more slick anyway. Whereas like when someone British speaks, like like when I speak, for example, if I say the word water and there's no T in it when I say it, it sounds terrible. It sounds like it's like two different words that I've just jammed together or something. Yeah. So it's jarring to the ear even. I used to think they were cheating when they would take a word that blatantly doesn't rhyme, but say it in such a slick way in the rhyme scheme that to your ear, it hacks your brain. It makes you think it rhymed. Oh, and like, even though if you go... <laughs> Of course. And if you put it on paper, you'd be, this doesn't work at all. But they can, people like him can say it and it will actually land. Like, I feel like for you, this must be a, a challenging approach, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's some 
words that definitely should rhyme that definitely don't rhyme in my accent. And but I've been told I can't think of any specific examples, but I've been told like uh, th- there's also like vice versa. There's some stuff that like I say that rhymes in my accent that doesn't rhyme in other people's. Um, okay. So I think it just varies. Like I think different words rhyme in different accents. Uh, um, so it probably is the easiest <coughs> lang- easiest accent to rap in American, but I'm not sure if that's a function of like the way their syllables sound or if it's just a function of the fact that that's what we're used to hearing rap in. True. Um, so yeah, who knows? That's a tough one to... Like, when you became the champion, you went on this epic streak. Like, the amount of battles you won. Because if anyone knows normally, even though, to be fair, Tony D himself had a great streak himself, when you go on a... When you become the champion, unfortunately, and this is just an element of the industry that everyone knows and accepts... Like the great example is the KOTD chain. They like if you if two battlers ra- battle right, and the guy with the chain is battling another really big name rapper. If if it's even fifty fifty, they're going to give it to the other guy because they yeah. love to pass the chain to a new person and get the big novelty pop, right? Mm. So if anything, even though in like boxing it's the opposite. If you're the champion, there's that sense of you've got to beat the champ you properly. The champ. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't like win by edging him on points, or they'll just give yeah. it to the champ, right? Yeah. Oftentimes they don't do that actually in battle rap. It's the opposite feel. So yeah, the, the run you went on as a result is pretty epic. I mean, a lot, some of these people as well. Some were good battles. Some you just murked them. Yeah, I mean, it was just, uh, I think, like, in title matches, a lot of it comes down to strategy more than anything. Um, more so than, like, any other battle. Like, any kind of promo battle is more just like an exhibition more than anything, and people are just trying to be entertained. Um, but in title matches, strategy is just, like, huge to, like, win it, and I think I'm quite good at that. So... I think like that's what plays into it. I think like Tony D's good at it. Like I think Ilmac's really good at it. I was kind of surprised that Ilmac. I kind of thought that Ilmac would just fucking once he got it off Pat's day would just that would be it like for the next four years. So like I was surprised that uh, he lost it, but I think that could be a function of the fact that yeah, King of the Dot does seem to like to pass their chains a lot. Um. Yeah, I do think like strategy plays a huge role in, in title matches, and I think that is like one of my main strengths. So yeah, I think it, it makes sense that I did pretty well while I was champion. Tony D is a good a good example to bring up now because he's someone again where if I was like just in my style where I only knew certain aspects of rap and I didn't appreciate all of them, I would actually have said quite naively that he's doing what you were described earlier. Like he got a good style and he's just spamming it. Like he he knows exactly how to do that same style over and over again. He does it against every single person, but it works. And that's the part at the end that I had to realize I was being an idiot, which is if it is effective against pretty much everyone and almost no one stopped him, at least when he was in his prime, like, Mm. He is kind of doing something genius. Like he must know like how to how the crowd's gonna take it, or he must he must know how to always be able to have consistency in what he does, etc. Mm. What do you think to that? Because obviously, if you want to be a champion, it's a good style, right? Yeah, no, I would one hundred percent agree. I think like if you've got something that uh, works, you've got a formula that works for you. Like it goes back to what I'm saying. You're only you don't need to like answer to some fucking. Like I don't know, like elitist fan group that are basically us twenty years yeah, ago. <laughs> yeah, basically us. Yeah, us that are like arbitrarily deciding an echo chamber what is like good and what isn't, sure. and you have to like adhere to this like super narrow definition of what's cheap and like what what isn't. And now your only obligation is to like win the battle and entertain people doing it, man. And if you've got like a foolproof way of doing it that works every time, hey, spam away. Do you know what I mean? No one seems to like worry about it in any other like flipping like <laughs> uh, pursuit like Iron Robin. Like ev- all he does is like dribble sure. down the right, cut yes. in on his left, curl at top bins. Do you know what I mean? No one's worried about Iron Robin. Like, <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You can't do that anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> Yeah, where's all the shots we left, mate? What are you doing? But yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's just hey, if if you can cut inside on your left and curl at top bins every time, bash on, man. Just bash on. But So yeah, right. that's how I feel about it. <laughs> Obviously the interesting thing about Tony D's career 
is, I mean, funnily enough, people even think actually that he like robbed fucking Ilmac when he did him in the UK because obviously like the crowd reaction was quite biased in that one, you know, and Ilmac, again, I actually think that was before Ilmac had updated his formula a bit, you know, and he was doing stuff that was a bit too clever and didn't go over in the room where some UK heads mm. just don't know what you're referring to. And yeah, 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 we would think it's sick, but that's again, that's irrelevant to in the moment if you want to win the battle. So one of the things that's interesting is though, it was actually pretty much that battle he had against Real Deal abroad where he choked was pretty much the exception that proved the rule that Tony D's unbeatable because except for that one time where he absolutely fucking bottled it he was always so slick he never looked like you could push him off like his, his even keel etc he was obviously yeah. a fit, amazing at playing the crowd and even slowing it down if he wants doing anything he wanted right but then came this time where he came back and you were the champion and he was coming back to test you now in this battle did we get the best Tony D I feel like you kind of banged him in this one mate Nah, I don't think he, we got the best Tony D. I think, like, he's just, he doesn't, like, care as much as he used to. Um, I don't think that's necessarily, like, a bad thing at all. Like, I don't think, yeah, I think it just is what it is. Um, I think he was more just, like, like, we got paid pretty well for that battle, so... Like, listen, um, it's a good battle and your side's very yeah. good, but I kind of wanted him to fight back a bit more, you know? Yeah. He, he almost concedes it himself in, like, the second round or something, doesn't he? Yeah, obviously, like, I think it would have been better for the fans if the battle was uh, closer. Um, but, I mean, if you're asking me if I think that's Tony D's, like, A game, I mean, obviously not. I don't know who would win out of me and Tony D if we were both on our A game. Um, I think... It, it's tough. I think... Probably, I think Tony's A game is better than my A game, but I think, like, in, uh, I think my style kind of soft counters his a bit. I think it did in this battle, um, though. I think that's part yeah. of it, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's just a rough matchup for his style. His style is a lot more, like, um, laid back, kind of picking you apart, and kind of almost like finessing you. And mine's is much more like blunt force, um, and I think I mean, you like, do literally yeah. shot in people's face for half the battles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like I think it's unless like what I'm saying is just absolutely trashing and obviously it, like falls flat on his face. It's like, hey, what are you shouting this garbage shit? At him for? <laughs> sure. like, Quiet down. But like, uh, if it's like actually connecting. If we're both on our A game, I think like I win, but not because I'm better than him, just because a function of like the styles that we do. Sure. Um, yeah. Along those lines, then I actually want to ask about that because I've noticed again, if there's ever like any sort of a dip or a moment where the energy's gone in your battle, that seems like actually a tactic you take, which is that you, there's almost like a kinetic quality to your style where you know that, like even if people aren't buying the bars right now, if I get super energetic and I get in the guy's face and I get really aggressive, like eventually if one of these bars hit, it's like primed to really go off. Yeah, exactly. But that's kind of like, it's it's balance not only in the type of material you're doing, so like balance between you know, jokey shit and long schemes and two bar punchlines, but it's also balance in the intensity with which you perform things, right? You can't just like be on a hundred the entire battle. Sure. Um, you've got to like, you know, be, you can like, there's a million ways to skin a cat, but you can't just have it like the same way, right? So you can come in like really low and then build and then have a dip in the middle and then finish high. Or you can like taper down your first, you can come in super high in your second round and kind of like capture the momentum. And a lot of it's like reactive to how the other person's round's gone. So if the other person's finished on a dip, you might want to come in super high energy to try and like seize it away from them and kind of make their round see worse than it was. If they've finished on like a really high note, you might want to come in like quite laid back and kind of set your own tempo. Um, but then obviously you're going to have to have like variance in the both the volume and the intensity with which you're performing, I think, to be you know the most effective you can be. As someone who is pretty acclaimed as a writer, got a very good pen game, as we alluded to earlier, I've got to ask you a question, right? Just as an industry professional, mm. tell me there's no Santa Claus on this one, right? Mm. Do you think actually Sharon does write 
some of those rebuttals. Like he just writes a thousand rebuttals every day and then he just remembers like the first half of a rebuttal and then he kind of takes something you said and work. Cause so, yeah. some of them are too good, mate. Like I don't, I don't think some of them could actually exist as a, like, like if he can do that, then fair play. I have to tip my heart. I'm a fucking pleb compared to him. Uh, some of them seem too good. Yeah. I mean, obviously it does have some pre bows. Like, I mean, there is definitely like, Freebows there, like how he's he's an incredible freestyler. Sure. Like I've seen it firsthand, like him freestyling stuff that could not have been pre-written. Um, but yeah, I mean it's not. Do you know what I mean? You can you could you could probably like predict with a reasonable degree because he's a smart kid. He can probably predict with a reasonable degree of accuracy what someone's going to say to him. Roughly. And then does he just do the disaster where you're just able to deliver the pre-written rebuttal as though it was freestyle? Because that's another part of the skill, right? If you can make it look like you just came the show, you know, you stumble on part, but then you catch that, and then you seem like you're thinking of a word. There's definitely a delivery that makes it go over Yeah, there. so if you, like, basically, it's pretty simple. You just, you can't have the setup multi be too good. If the setup multi is too good... <laughs> All right, yes, it, yes. It sounds like you, it's obviously written. But if your setup multi is like, you know, I spit sicker flows. You know what I Charlie mean? Clip people, style, of course. Do you know what I mean? Like people like not think that you've wrote that. Yes. That's a pretty <laughs> but, but good like actual, double bluff. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you've written it like obviously sure. to sound like you haven't written it. Um, you know, by the way, on, on the on a side tangent, that's one thing I always thought was hilarious because you know, famously, like the American rappers laugh at like the don't, the the initial don't flop era is that we used to go like you know I rap darker or whatever the fuck mm. they think that's funny, right? Mate, I would even tell you Charlie Clips is one of the goats, but mate, all of his rebuttals start like that. It's like my style, Illa. It's like that's garbage. That's not even English. Doesn't even make sense. Yeah, like yeah, fucking yeah. shit. <laughs> but it's like what you're saying. Somehow it does make it seem cool because it makes it feel like it has to be a rebuttal, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It makes it feel like more off the cuff. <laughs> and I don't know, like, obviously, I don't know what Sharon's right, man. Like, I, like, maybe, if, as far as I know, they're all freestyle, right? But I mean, sure. I, I would, but I definitely know for a fact that people do do pre bows. So, like, could be. It, I would say there's a <laughs> decent chance that there's <laughs> yes. one or two of them have been pre bows. Okay, fair enough. Okay, one thing I wanted to ask you about is another thing that's very interesting is everyone, obviously, early in their career, because personals are so effective, and again, for people who haven't watched much battle rap, this is, again, a fu- uh, like a, a factor of how good you are at delivery, basically, because half the shit you're saying when it's a personal, especially if it's some really intricate stuff about their life, like at the end, the whole crowd could just go... Is that true? I, I have mm. no idea. But they don't. If you deliver it right, they're like, wow, oh my God. Like, you know, Arsenal is a bus driver or whatever. Like, I, I don't even yeah, think exactly. that was ever true. You know, I'm going to assume it wasn't. <laughs> but obviously it landed like people, oh no, it was, it was a nurse. I, I think it was T-Rex was the nurse. Whichever way around it was, these, sometimes they work. And then the worst thing is they stick. And then that becomes the angle that the next, you know, cliched guy picks up on. Right? In your case, I don't, know if, I don't know what your take on this, so I'll give you mine. The interesting thing is when people heard that your girlfriend was someone you'd met who was in Canada and that you were mm. communicating with her over the internet, they thought, oh, perfect. I've got the easiest angle ever. Mate, I no joke think that the last five or six times people have done that angle, it's fucked them up because it's not actually a very good angle. And it's so, and it's there's not much you can do with it really. So a lot of them haven't had a clever way of doing it. And I feel like yeah. they've just killed their own round. Like they're taking the momentum and what could have been great material because they think they're going to get the crowd to be like, ooh. But it's like, mate, everyone's done that against them. The last 10 battles. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, like it doesn't, I don't think it like works that well anymore because like it's kind of well established that like we've well i don't know but it's pretty well established in the battle rap community over here that like me and my fiance have been living together for quite some time so it's like it's not really that much of an angle yeah maybe it, it would be if we were like still in a long distance relationship or whatever but like we're not and haven't been for a really long time so I don't know, it's just not an angle anymore. Um, For me, like, it's always, when people do it, it's always, like, beautiful. Just please do three rounds of this. (laughs) Because it's, like, it's just always, like, well, not obviously at the start when it was, like, kind of big reveal. Um, But now it just, like, always falls flat. So, hey, it's, like, an easy night for me. But, yeah, I would tend to agree with you that you need to be careful. Um... 
when you're doing like kind of tropes on people that you're not just kind of like treading a very well-worn path that people are kind of sick of. But it's like when they, obviously, you know, when the first Americans came over to Don't Flop, because we were all so excited that, you know, the people we all watched were there. Mate, the amount of lines that we were all gassing that were, you know, like, I'll be bucking ham in this fucking, you know, you know all the ones that were mm. the really cliched ones where it's like they just read like the first page of the internet of what is Britain, you know, half of them were yeah. about the Queen, because obviously that's a famous thing <laughs> I can tell you. In my field, mate, I can tell you that's the go-to insult Americans do. They go, fuck the Queen. And you go, I don't think you understand the culture yeah, of my country so, for the last I mean, like we, 100 years. We yeah. don't, we don't we really agree. agree yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, we're with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's, it doesn't, just doesn't get to us, mate. It's not like dissing the American flag or something. Yeah, you know. exactly. But okay, on another angle on that I wanted to ask about was, like I said before, you have I think you've gone too far, mate. I don't know if you're just like this in real life, but you've gone too far down playing yourself. Like when you said respect BA could be more prolific or well-known, like I don't feel as though that's the reality I live in at least. Like I would pick you as one of my top rappers in the whole world. I know, listen, I get that rap is a status game. And so, for mm. example, it doesn't matter how big you get in Dope Flop or KTD, there's a certain type of person will never respect you if you weren't on Smack, for example, like unless mm. you've battled the big names there. So to them, this just shows how different preference can be. Like to me, I understand culturally why Loaded Lux is like a legend and a goat and all that shit, but he's barely done any battles. Some of them are a bit ropey. Like I think you're better than him, for example. So why why do you kind of self-deprecate so much? Um, I don't really see it as, as self-deprecation, man. I'm, I'm I definitely think that like I am really good, but I I don't I think it just seems self-deprecatory because I'm in a field where people are generally saying that they're better than they are. Right. Yeah. So when I say just like a, an honest like how good I think I am, it seems like I'm done playing myself just because it's compared to people that are like. Yeah, I'm the best in the world, no debate, and I've never lost a battle. Could you be the best? No, I don't think I'm the best. No, could you be the best, though? No, I don't think so. I think, like, there's elements that I have that are just, like, uh, couldn't develop. Um, like, I think there is an element, I guess, like, people kind of call it, like, the X factor, where there's kind of, like, this charis- charisma or like magnetism that people are just like drawn to watch them that people like hollow and past day sure. just obviously have yes um and just from like watching my i mean obviously like i wouldn't ever be like you know think that i have like you can't watch yourself and be like oh that guy has a lot of like charisma or magnetism because it's just you right like you don't fucking know but i certainly like when i watch my battles and then watch theirs it's like there's obviously a pretty big difference there, in my opinion. Um, and if they do everything else as well, if not better than me, then you know, they can learn the stuff that I can do, even right, if they don't can't know learn already. I can't learn theirs. Yeah. So okay. like I'm, <coughs> no, I don't think I could ever be the best. Um, I think I am really good. Like I don't get it wrong. I think I'm really good at battle rap, and I think of. Like, yeah, sussed out the strategy, but at least better than everyone in the UK. Like, actually understand the sort of nuts and bolts of how it works and how to best put uh, a round together. Um, but I'm just like, I, I don't care enough about it to, like, lie to myself over it, you okay. know? Like, I don't... I think we all kind of like in life, like with the things that we like really care about, like lie to ourselves a bit about like how competent we are at them to like massage our own egos. Sure. Um, but for me, like in battle rap just doesn't qualify as one of those things. Like I definitely do really enjoy it and I enjoy it like as a, as a hobby. Um, but not enough to be like it's not my everything so i don't need to you know prop myself up and be like uh no you are the best like motivational (laughs) speech in the mirror and that it's just like whatever i am the best or i'm not the best like if i was the best i would tell you if i thought it was but like i I doesn't i don't care enough about it to 
lie to myself and you about it for fair play. So uh, it's really not self-deprecatory, man. I'm I'm not trying to be like this guy that's always painting himself as like the underdog. Like it's just that everyone else is overhyping their abilities, so it looks right. like I'm underplaying mine. I that think. makes sense. Right, obviously, again, this could be where, not knowing the industry behind the scenes, I could just be saying the most ridiculous, naively optimistic stuff, but would you ever go, if you got an offer to do a big one, to go and do a smack battle? Now, as I say, I can imagine they're just going to be like, even if I, like, who the fuck is this? Like, maybe they wouldn't know. Maybe maybe you're not, niche, you are too niche. But mm. after having seen when Sharon went and did it, and he, he took a very interesting approach and actually got over, you know, when he did the shotgun shug battle, like, I'd love to see it. Is it something you'd be up for? Are you interested in that? Well, I've done one smack battle, the one against Gemini. Sure. Um, but in, ter- in terms of like doing one in like New York or whatever, yeah, fuck yeah. Obviously, I'd love to do that, man. Like the first battles I've ever watched were smack battles. Like meeting Smack was like the fucking coolest thing that's happened to me in battle rap. Like cooler than meeting Drake or fucking anyone else I've met through this. Meeting Smack was like the fucking coolest shit ever. Because, like, I watched this fucking battles when I was, like, 15, dude. Like, do you know what I mean? Watching them, the fucking bootlegs on a of a camcorder video that was bootlegged off a of VHS. Listening to the fucking LimeWire audio of the battles and shit. Just, like, yeah, so fucking obviously I would love to do, like, a smack battle. Like, would they have me back? Probably not. Don't blame them. So, um, yeah. Obviously, I'd love to do it, but I, I don't think there's any sort of real chance of that happening. Um, I think, really, I was booked when they came to the UK alongside Gemini because they, they wanted a local local people. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I'm not sure how aware they are of who I actually am, considering they thought I lived in London. <laughs> <laughs> they actually like messaged me the day before the battle, like, are you coming to the press conference? And I was like, no, I live in a different country, man. I'm <laughs> not coming to the press conference. It's like, sure. yeah, they thought I was just in London. And I'm pretty sure like I had one of them say, oh, you're from Fife. And I'm like, yeah, and they're like, is that not in London? That's <laughs> no, not in London. <laughs> it's when the Americans do that one where they go, so wait a minute, so so where in the UK is Great Britain? You know when they do that one? Yeah, like, yeah, those yeah. are my favourite ones where it's like you can't even start. It's like, I, I haven't got time for this, mate. Listen, just forget no, it. Look, I'm not from London. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's London and then there's not London. Those are the two cities. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, another quick, like, obviously we're getting to the end now. This will be like one of the last questions. One of the things I wanted to ask you along those lines then is, um, let me think. Oh, one of the things actually that's interesting is, yes, battle rep is an incredibly niche thing, even to this day. I mean, even when you see the big numbers on a video, that's because YouTube has access to the whole fucking world in theory. Like, you know, it could still be just a few lone nerds, but in every single place around the universe that watch the video and then it gets whatever, 100K views. That would make sense, right? But I've noticed the interesting thing about it that's quite cool, and I I can relate myself in my own field, which is still to some degree quite niche, Mm. is if someone who is famous does themselves come from that niche or fuck with that niche you will get these surreal moments like you're saying with drake where there'll be someone that you think to yourself that guy's like out of the universe compared to us but if they get into it to them you might be cool and they might actually like you might get to meet them might have these cool so for example if anyone doesn't know that's how i've actually exploited as i alluded to earlier to get a lot of these interviews on my side channel i basically just exploited anyone who vaguely knew about <laughs> esports and i've just waited till the right moment to be a bit of a cunt and just be like oh come and do an interview for me or whatever <laughs> and hopefully they know me just enough that i get away with it you know yeah. but i've heard that within the battle rap scene sure this is probably going to be the american scene mainly there are actually industry figures and rappers who are mad fans of it and watch loads of the battles or they know loads of the people and to them it's like their version of a sport you know 100 percent. do you get that yourself do you ever have times where to you in real life you know you're just jed some guy who lives in five mm. but sometimes you'll just meet or run into someone famous or get props from someone some ridiculous that you think how have i ever entered that person's world uh hell no it's never happened to me but okay, <laughs> it's obviously like <laughs> Uh, no, but definitely people more famous than me. So, like, I'm pretty sure I've seen on Twitter that Shaq's like a fan of Shotgun Sugar and shit. Right. Like, that's crazy that Shaq's like a fan of you and shit. But 
No, nah, I've never met anyone famous that's been a fan of me, but I don't really, I don't know like how many sort of famous people I've actually met. Like I sure. sort of briefly had a head nod interaction with Drake as we passed each other one time. That's pretty close. Like, <laughs> okay. But like other than that, like nah, not really, man. Like I guess I seen uh, Doc Brown. Um, right. Seen Doc Brown at the event on Saturday and yeah but i don't know man it's never happened to me like like a famous person i'm like oh, how, how the hell do you know who i am other than you you would be the only one i'll to do know. my best to get as big as i can then <laughs> would... i'll see if i can make up for it for you <laughs> no to be honest like you're probably the most famous person that knows who i am so shout fair out to play. you fair play by the way just as a last question like what is your background knowing about gaming stuff then i just fucking just love video games man so like I don't know, like, how it started. Probably started, like... Yeah, I got a SNES when I was a kid uh, for, like, my ninth birthday or something, and I just, like, fucking always loved, like, playing video games. Man, I still, like, play... Uh, I was playing League for a while, which is how I found out about you. Um, but then that kind of stopped playing that. And then just about everything, like kind of like competitive i played competitive call of duty 4 for a while did all right like we were front page on game battles or whatever so we were decent um and then yeah other than that i just kind of like hobbyist like i hit legend and hearthstone once that's cool i'm like diamond and starcraft so i'm like i just like playing fucking different video games man and just like enjoy watching it being done at the highest level like probably the esport i watch the most is starcraft just now sure um but yeah just a fan of it man just in general a fan of esports okay fair play right at the end of this interview do you have like a final message or something you want to thank or say hello to um not particularly thanks for having me on man and i just hope everyone has a fucking great day and enjoys the life that they're currently leading Nope, nothing but good things happen to you all. So, yeah.